In the near future, virtual reality games have become incredibly popular all over the world. Because of this, many development companies have picked up the trend of creating such games. As a result, the struggle between them became more and more fierce over time. Big companies are constantly trying to create the highest quality game possible. The main character was one of those who creates such games with the support of artificial intelligence. The guy was greeted by a hologram of a girl and told him that from now on, she would help him. The girl asked to call her Grace. She had big eyes and long golden hair. The guy himself was of ordinary appearance with glasses, but nevertheless he was the main developer of a gaming company, and his name was Murphy. Grace was the most advanced existing artificial intelligence in the entire world. And so Grace and Murphy began creating games together. In the first stages of development, they encountered many system errors, bugs and other difficulties. They heard different things in the game. Sometimes they were almost flooded. Sometimes they were almost killed by lightning, but they didn't give up. They went through a difficult journey to overcome all difficulties. But soon, with Grace's help, Murphy was free to spread his creative wings. Murphy continued to face various difficulties, but Grace was always there to help the guy with his work. And then the day came when Murphy and Grace achieved the result they had been working towards for so long. Finally, they were able to look around the created game world, and they had sincere smiles on their faces, signifying happiness. Finally, they created a game that all future users will call truly high quality. This game was recognized as the best massively multiplayer online virtual reality role-playing game. Murphy managed to create a game with the fantasy world of Wing Online, one day the guy was sitting at work on finalizing the gameplay. Suddenly Grace turned to him. Murphy asked her what happened. The girl asked what would happen to her when they finished the game. The young man answered her with a smile that she would become the goddess of this place and asked Grace to take care of this world. But the artificial intelligence, it seems, was not very happy about this news. She asked Murphy if this meant that she and the gentleman would soon say goodbye. The guy was confused by these words. Murphy himself did not expect that this could happen. The young man offered the girl the option that she could contact him, and in the future, many other projects would be created. But Grace didn't even listen further to the guy. She turned away and said that it was unlikely that she would help with them, since she would be busy here. Murphy agreed with the girl. He said that she was probably right, because she would have a lot of work if she started managing the entire game. Grace began thoughtfully that one day, when this world came to an end, as now, the girl asked the young man to stay with her. The artificial intelligence turned to the developer and smiled a sincere and kind smile. Murphy opened his eyes in surprise and was silent because he did not know what to answer. For some time after, the developer sat on a chair and said something. He looked disheveled. At the end, he summed up that this is how he sees the next major update. It's been a long time since their company launched Ving online, a full five years already. One of the people present in the discussion room entered into a dialogue with Murphy. He was the general director of the company's commercial department and his name was Sam. The man said that previously they had a stable number of players, but recently their number began to fall, as a result of which sales also decreased. Sam added that the commercial department was proposing to add an in-game payment system in the Season 6 update, to which Murphy indignantly wondered why on earth. The general manager of the commercial department was shocked, because he expected Murphy to approve of this proposal. But the developer continued to sit with his hands behind his head. He irritably asked Sam, who allowed him to add this payment system. But the man, slightly confused, replied that all this was for the benefit of the company. But Murphy repeated the director's phrase and suggested that if he thought that way, the other executives should agree to sell the company's shares at the end of the year. Some of those present sat, keeping a straight face, and some openly began to worry, because Murphy's words turned out to be true. The developer added with an evil smile that they thought this decision would raise their price at least a little and told them to act. One of the men present told him to stop discussing such things here. Murphy went on to say that they should release an improvement to the server next, but if they plan to make it a moneymaker, then wholesale selling the stock after the price goes up will end up hurting the company even more. The developer concluded that this will all lead to the end of the game and the balance between small investors will be destroyed. Murphy asked the CEO about how many companies have gone bankrupt for the same reason, due to the introduction of an in-game payment system. In conclusion, the developer said that all this will not happen while he works here. The guy said that he would not allow them to cheat in the game he created, but all the men gathered in the hall were tensely silent, and the general director was tormented by excitement that his insidious plan was so easily revealed. One of those present could not stand it and shouted to Murphy that he was crazy and no one was going to cheat, but the guy told him that if they wanted, they could always fire him. 
The developer got up from his chair and headed towards the exit. But as he left, he added that they didn't have the courage for that. Murphy said that if they do decide to fire him, they shouldn't expect him to change his mind. With these words, the guy slammed the door of the discussion room with all his might. The men remaining in the hall began to discuss the behavior of the developer. They called him names, said that the meeting had just begun, but immediately ended in a quarrel. But someone said that nothing could be done. After all, he was the creator of the game. But others said that it was still impossible to behave this way and decided to try to persuade him. But the general director himself was silent. He looked very gloomy. Meanwhile, Murphy walked irritably along the corridor. He thought that the chairman's son was too suspicious in appearance. Three days passed, during the day something strange happened on the main square in the online game wing. All participants in the game stood calmly in the square. Suddenly a player appeared in the square. Everyone present immediately noticed him. Some simply turned and looked at him, while others were surprised and even panicked. The player began to be enveloped by something small and black, similar to clusters of aura. The player himself extended his hand and forcefully asked for help from characters with healing abilities. But then the player fell to his knees. Those present began to suspect that the guy was poisoned with something. One of the players ordered to quickly use purification on him. A girl with a staff emerged from the crowd of players. She decided to help the poisoned player with her energy cleansing, which removes negative statuses from the target. The purification was aimed at the player and began to affect them, but the black aura of poison spread faster. The infection consumed half of the guy's body, and half of his body fell to the ground. Everyone present was shocked. They did not understand whether the guy died or not. A status arose that the guy had turned to dust, which no one understood. The rest of the players were enveloped in panic and fear as the black dust began to spread further. After some time, information about this incident reached the main office of the game, and the community message board was bursting with the number of messages. John, who was the head of the Quality Assurance Department, burst into Murphy's office and told the developer that it seemed that the game was spreading into an incurable epidemic. The guy added that the problem is that if you die because of this virus, your account and character disappear forever. Murphy was calm. He said that he would go and check now. The developer added that the problem should not be serious and asked John not to worry because they would restore the accounts when he finished checking. But the head of the quality assurance department was not sure of the guy's words. Therefore, John added that in all likelihood, this will not be easy to fix because the players are going crazy. But Murphy no longer listened to him. He closed the gaming booth and entered the game himself to figure out what was happening in it. A system message appeared on the screen, prompting the guy to select the mode he wanted to access. The young man answers the system that he wants to select developer mode. A new system message appears on the screen, stating that a connection is being established with developer mode. Murphy was instantly transported into the playing space. And then the guy appeared in the game on the main square. The guy greeted all the players and introduced himself as Game Master Anchovy. At the same moment, the players asked him why he couldn't fix the game. The developer explained that they are currently trying to figure out the cause of the current issue and fix it as quickly as possible. But players were outraged at how a character could disappear completely and asked Anchovy to make sure they returned. The developer posted a message that an urgent check would be carried out as a result, but people began to become even more indignant. Anchovy added messages that user accounts and characters will be returned after verification. They will all be restored. But the player's dissatisfaction only grew, so the developer simply switched off. Anchovy was transported to another game location, where there were no characters, in order to finally be in silence. The guy noticed the black dust flying around. He caught one part of it and realized that this was an epidemic status that he had created. The young man's plan was to sow panic in the game, to spread the status of an epidemic throughout the entire gaming space. Anchovy wanted to infect all players with this epidemic, but then Murphy realized that things were much more serious than he had imagined. Then Grace turned to Anchovy, who asked why the guy was conducting such a terrible experiment. But Murphy replied with a smile that he was hosting it as a tribute to the classic games. The developer spoke about the most famous massively multiplayer online role-playing game of the 2000s, in which a bug arose that caused an epidemic. Grace was surprised and asked again, Murphy clarified, adding that the problem had become so serious that even documents related to the game were published. The young man said that he had not seen such classic game events in other modern games, so he tried to recreate them in this game. Murphy added that the problem is that it has become a fatal bug that cannot be controlled by the in-game system. The young man noted this as a little wasteful, but there was nothing he could do about it. The guy asked Grace to delete all data from here, the girl responded with approval. 
And in theory, then everything should have gone away, but the epidemic remained. Anchovy began to suspect that it was all because of Grace. Murphy asked the artificial intelligence to report the current status, but Grace did not respond. Suddenly, someone's words were heard behind the guy's back that no one would answer him, no matter how much he called. Then CEO Sam appeared next to Murphy. The man announced to Anchovy that from now on he has no access to the data of this game. The developer turned around and angrily asked the director what he was talking about, but Sam answered the guy with joy on his face that he was saying that he was fired. Murphy's face was filled with shock and bewilderment at the CEO's sudden announcement. Sam explained that in today's news, the serious incident that happened in this game was because of an employee who rebelled against the company. He deliberately created a plan to destroy it, and the company, having learned about this, decided to fire him. From these words, Murphy stood in a stupor and remained silent. The director also added that the guy will force him to pay the damage through lawyers. Anchovy asked Sam if he came up with it himself, but he replied that Murphy should not worry because he would make every effort to lead the project in the guy's place. The CEO said the developer was taking a bite that was too big for him to chew. With these words, Anchovy swung his fist at Sam, grabbing him by the collar with his other hand. A couple of fist centimeters from the CEO's face, something stopped this blow. Grace flew from the sky at super speed, breaking the tiles into huge blocks from the power of her landing. The guy's head was pressed against the stone slabs by a powerful collision. Grace towered over the developer, blocking out the sun. The girl pressed the guy's face tightly to the ground with her foot. The young man did not understand the motive for her sudden action. Anchovy was approached by the CEO, who laughed evilly at this. Sam asked what Murphy thought and what it was like to be reunited with his past partner in this way. The man added a question about whether the young man hoped for the loyalty of the artificial intelligence. But Anchovy tried to be indignant that he would not leave it like that. The CEO laughed and repeated the guy's words and told him that he was crazy. Sam asked the developer what he thought the man was doing all the time that Anchovy lived in the virtual world. The director told the young man that in the real world, he was just a cog in a much larger mechanism, and to survive he needed to adapt. And in the end, Sam suggested that the guy pull himself together and add a sense of reality to his own algorithm. The man told Murphy that even if he didn't do this, he would have to look for a good lawyer to pay every last penny, and at the end of the monologue he wished him good luck. Anchovy mentally promised that Sam would not succeed, because Murphy had already decided that he would personally put an end to this world. At that moment, the guy's face was illuminated by the light of the room, and the doors of the gaming booth opened. Security guards had gathered at the booth, waiting for the guy to leave. Murphy mentally promised that soon the CEO would see the worst possible ending, the bad ending. There was news on TV that at a major Korean game development company, one of the employees said that he did not like the company's policies. It turned out that he deliberately added a virus bug to the game. More than 70% of this company's annual sales come from the online game wing. The young man watched the news and mentally talked to Sam, claiming that his plan was imperfect. Murphy knew that if the game died, then the company itself would die. Anchovy decided to change from home clothes to play clothes. The guy again mentally spoke to the CEO that although he said that maybe Murphy was only a minor detail in reality, but in virtual reality, he was a god. The guy put on a gaming helmet and mentally told Sam that they would see each other soon because God is really angry. The young man sat down in the gaming chair to enter the game. The guy's plan was to start the end of the world in Ving Online. And so Murphy moved into the gaming dimension. Someone addressed the guy, calling him Master. The unidentified boy told Anchovy that he was worried because the youth had not logged online yesterday and asked if Murphy was hurt. This guy's name was Oasis. He is the one who replaced Grace when she became the artificial intelligence of this world. And the guy acquired the artificial intelligence with the company's money. But Oasis was registered to Anchovy's personal account, so it did not disappear. The guy explained to the artificial intelligence that he had some unfinished business and immediately asked Oasis if he received notifications every day. The boy answered in the affirmative and said that the organization had sent him a letter. The artificial intelligence opened the letter and began to read it. Oasis was horrified by the news that his master had been fired. He realized that he had not yet come to his senses. The artificial intelligence realized that Murphy could not access the game developer's servers. The boy immediately tried to console his master by telling him that this company was not the only one that was engaged in development, and there were plenty of places that needed capable people like him. But Murphy brushed off Oasis's proposals, telling him that he didn't need it. The young man ordered the artificial intelligence to open a connection channel. Anchovy explained that the address is disguised, as if it were coming from China, and all the files where important information about the operation of the system is recorded 
are faked for different accounts. The guy added that if at least one of them is tracked, then he should get rid of them all. Oasis replied that he understood, but did not know why this was necessary. Murphy asked the boy to listen more carefully. The guy continued that from now on they will begin to destroy the wing game online. With these words, the young man pressed the button to enter the game. Icons appeared on the screen that said, violence, fear, crimes, inappropriate behavior, and also a system notification appeared that the game contains extreme content and advice not to play if you have a weak psyche and body, and so on. Anchovy moved into the playing space where he was met by Oasis, who was dressed in women's clothing. The boy greeted his master, saying that he was here. Murphy was angry at him because it took him too long to simply create a character, but Oasis explained that this was his first time becoming an in-game character, which is why customization took so long. The artificial intelligence was happy that it finally had a real body, but this angered Anchovy. The Oasis glowed with happiness. It was interesting and exciting for him. He liked this wonderful feeling. But much to the boy's regret, Murphy did not share his joy and moved forward, leaving behind the rejoicing artificial intelligence. Oasis noticed that his master had gotten far ahead of him and rushed to catch up with his master, begging him to wait so that he could go together. The guys came to some village. It was quite lively there. Due to the disconnection from the organization's system, all online information related to Wing was reset, so everything appears new. Therefore, Murphy waited for more, and Oasis followed him and glowed with joy. Anchovy didn't understand why his artificial intelligence was so happy. Meanwhile, the boy dreamily thought about adventures with his master. For him, they were like a dream. Oasis asked his master what they would do, and immediately suggested that since they were low level, they could hunt squirrels, since they were only level one. The boy continued to reason that they would first take the task from the village chief. But Anchovy interrupted him and asked him to hold the torch in the chicken. Oasis did not understand what his master's actions were. Therefore, the artificial intelligence decided to ask Murphy why they needed a torch. But the guy was immediately surprised by what kind of question he was asking and answered that the torch was needed, of course, for arson. With these words, Anchovy set fire to a haystack standing nearby with a torch. Oasis was horrified by the actions of his master, but Murphy gloatingly told the boy to repeat after him because they needed a character with notoriety. Suddenly, the flames of fire spread throughout all the houses of the village, and a system message appeared that the guy had committed a crime, for which he earned ten points of dishonor. Murphy was surprised that setting a house on fire only gave ten infamy, but suggested that it might be because they were in a newbie village. Suddenly an old man approached the young man and tugged him by the shoulder. Grandfather demanded Anchovy to stop immediately, but Murphy, with a calm face, set fire to the old man's clothes. The grandfather instantly burst into flames and screamed from the pain of his burns. It only now dawned on Oasis that this was not an adventure, but a crime. A system message appeared that Murphy had killed a non-player character and earned 100 dishonor points. The guy was happy and said that he knew that the game system would give a lot of points for killing non-player characters. The artificial intelligence was indignant and asked what his master was doing, but the young man told him not to worry because he would resurrect anyway and then the old man's corpse instantly disappeared. But very close by, a new hologram of the old man's non-player character began to appear. The grandfather approached the guy and greeted him, introducing himself as the headman of this village. But Murphy immediately brought a torch with fire to him, causing the old man to catch fire. The young man was delighted to discover an easy way to earn dishonor points. Meanwhile, Oasis watched in horror at the actions of his master and prayed that at least someone would stop him. Suddenly, someone's scream was heard, indicating what was happening with the guys. A crowd of villagers pointed at Murphy, who set fire to their village and headed to a showdown with him. They were already a couple of meters from Anchovy and were armed. Oasis mentally begged them to stop their mad master, but Murphy dealt with them in the same way as with the village headman. Some of the surviving residents fled in fear away from the ferocity of Anchovy. Meanwhile, the system displayed messages one after another that the guy had killed an NPC and earned a hundred points of infamy. The artificial intelligence realized that his master said those words seriously. Oasis almost cried from the horror of what was happening. After all, Murphy is really going to end the Wing Online game. Suddenly, the knights ran up to the guys. They surrounded the criminals and ordered them to stand because they were arrested for crimes. All the knights were armed with spears and pointed them at the young men. Oasis stood in fear, not understanding what to do next. But Murphy smiled maliciously. The guys were put into a carriage and taken somewhere. The cart was surrounded by three more riders as backup. Meanwhile, in the carriage, the young man looked at his earned dishonor points. There were 2,140 of them. 
and the artificial intelligence was upset and could not believe that they went to prison from the very beginning. Anchovy reassured the boy, saying that a different place awaits newcomers. This is an advantage for novice players to make it easier to get used to. The guy added that even as a beginner, you can still make money from dishonor and asked the artificial intelligence what would happen then. Oasis replied that he did not know. Murphy explained that in this case the village of newcomers would change to a city of crime. Meanwhile, the guys had already been brought to the place. It was quite spacious, and there were some objects standing there. Murphy settled down to sit on the floor. The criminals were rather rudely shoved into some room. The knight angrily said that this ditch suited them perfectly. Finally, the man spat in the direction of the young men and left. The guys were left in this place, and the knights themselves went about their business. Murphy explained to the boy that if a player reaches a certain number of dishonor points, he receives a reward. Now the guards were not attacking him, but the thugs were hunting for him. This is the only city where players with a bad reputation can survive. This city is called Underground. Oasis asked if there were any positives to this city. The young man answered him that instead of them, the guys could take a hidden task that no one had ever received. This was a villain's quest, available only to the worst players in the world. The artificial intelligence noticed that it was directly about his master, and thought that it was quite effective if Murphy aimed at him. But Anchovy explained to the boy that not really, this was just a desperate step. Oasis asked the guy why he was taking risks then. Murphy explained that he worked hard to develop this task, but no one knows or uses it. The guy added that this is extremely sad. Suddenly someone called the guys. A man in a black cloak appeared in the darkness. He commanded the young men to approach him. The guys hesitated in surprise, but the man repeated the request and added that he had good news for them. Murphy explained to the artificial intelligence that this man is a non-player character who is issuing this task. The stranger said that he couldn't believe that the young man had already earned so much dishonor. It seemed to him that the guy was not one of the usual villains. The man introduced himself as Dean. He was a dark magician. Dean added that the guy seemed ready to serve the Dark Lord. A hologram screen with a system notification appeared in front of the boys. The message says that the Dark Mage Dean is trying to make them a member of the Dark Cult. The condition of the task was to earn more than a thousand dishonor points as a newcomer. Then the class will change to a hidden Dark Mage. Oasis told the master that this was incredible, so this is what he wanted. But Murphy, smiling wickedly, summoned a fiery torch. Anchovy looks at the boy questioningly. Artificial intelligence began to doubt its assumption. At that moment, the young man directed the flame of the torch at the magician Dean. Oasis screamed. He asked the guy to stop, because the magician could give him a hidden class and clarify whether this is what his master came for. But Murphy did not stop. The boy shouted to him about why the guy continued to kill the magician Dean. The artificial intelligence called Anchovy crazy, but the guy explained that he was not a pervert for killing an NPC without a reason. Suddenly, Dean's charred body rose from the ground. A dense, gloomy blue curtain of energy formed over the magician. Oasis was surprised by what he saw and was frightened. And Murphy smiled slyly, because it seemed that everything was going according to his plan. The charred body of the magician began to change. His limbs began to be covered with armor. A few moments later, a knight appeared in front of the guys, covered in this dark blue energy. The gloomy entity spoke. She said that she could not believe that the guy killed Dean. And the knight added that he had been waiting for a long time for people like Murphy, thoroughly imbued with evil. For some reason, the artificial intelligence felt insulted. The entity introduced itself as Terry, commander of the Dark Knights, and ordered to follow him. Terry said that he would find a suitable use for their anger. Then a hologram screen appeared with a system notification that Terry, the commander of the Dark Knights, wanted to create a Dark Lord character, and the reward of the task was to change the class to a hidden Dark Knight. The young man explained to Oasis that he was just looking for the Dark Knight. The artificial intelligence was surprised by the guy's words and seemed to like their content. The boy invited the gentleman to go together, and the boys followed into the dark portal. The location changed to an even gloomier one. The new room resembled a medieval castle. It was illuminated by fiery torches. Terry and the young men ascended to some kind of spiritualistic circle. The knight welcomed the villains to the new place. But Terry said that before he bestows the title of Dark Knights on the guys, he asked permission to ask them a few questions. The knight started from Oasis, he called him. Murphy quietly explained to the artificial intelligence to give a negative answer to Terry's question, because he would have another task. But the boy was indignant. He called the gentleman petty, because he wants to appropriate all the classwork only for himself. But Anchovy explained to the boy that they should advance together. If both are of the same class, then the balance of the group will be upset. 
Murphy added to Oasis not to worry, because the second quest would be perfect for him. The Dark Knight turned his gaze to the artificial intelligence, leaving him shocked. Terry said that the only and absolute ruler of this world is the Dark Star. Does Oasis agree with this? After hesitating for a second, the boy gives the knight a negative answer. This answer makes Terry furious. He screamed at the boy, how dare he deny the Dark Star, and announced to Oasis that he had not passed. The Dark Knight chased away the artificial intelligence. Terry turned to Murphy and asked him the same question. The question is whether he agrees, to which Murphy agreed. Anchovy added that the only person capable of ruling the world can only be a Dark Star. Terry praised the young man for his excellent answer. The Dark Knight asked the guy, as a minion of a Dark Star, whether Murphy would devote himself to a Dark Cult. The guy agreed to this. Terry asked the young man, as a member of the Dark Knights, if he would take it upon himself to destroy the followers of the Light. Anchovy replied that this is exactly what he wants. The entity praised the guy for his answer and asked his name. The young man introduced himself as Leo. The NPC asked one last question to Anchovy. Will Leo dedicate his body and soul to the Dark Lord? A system message appeared with a text that said if the guy agreed, he would become a Dark Knight and asked if he agreed, to which the guy gladly agreed. A system message appeared that Murphy has become a Dark Knight. Friendship has been established with a Dark Cult. Mana points will be removed. All skills will require health points. All skills are available only to Dark Knights. They will be unlocked depending on the character's level. Another message said that the unique characteristic of the Dark Knight, Diabolism, had been unlocked. The guy began to reason that if he raised the level of dishonor, he could endlessly become stronger. The guy added that his indicators will be reset to zero when he is caught by the guards, and the young man will have to raise the level of all his skills again. In these extreme conditions lies the beauty of the task. Oasis was annoyed at the thought that instead of adventure, they had to commit crimes and be on the run. The knight congratulated the young man on joining the Dark Knights and gave him a small gift. It was a huge sword. But Murphy noted that the chalk was too small and thought that it was necessary to install the original weapon so that he could get a normal one, and the system displayed a new message about the appearance of the sword. The Dark Knight told the guy to go and spread the name of the Dark Cult throughout the continent. Oasis wanted to leave to get the task, but Murphy stopped him. The guy decides to kill Terry for the sake of a bright future for the Dark Cult. The guy raised his sword against the knight. In the game, you earn experience and level up by hunting monsters. Equipment can be obtained by purchasing it with gold received from quests. Sometimes you can do collecting, or you can do cooking. Join groups with friends, go on adventures and go on group trips to dungeons. After all, this is the essence of a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Spending nine hours hacking away at an NPC who can't even respond is abnormal gameplay. But if this is the path that Mr. chose, Oasis decided to follow this path. The boy grabbed the torch tighter and ran towards the knight with it to help Murphy. The artificial intelligence jumped up and raised the torch straight into the knight's face. Some of the flames touched Terry's armor. The young man called Oasis a fool because the Dark Knight was immune to fire and the boy was not a member of the Dark Cult. Anchovy added that if a non-cult user attacks him, Terry will fight. The artificial intelligence looked from Murphy to the Dark Knight. The entity raised its giant sword upward, intending to strike at the oasis that attacked it. It only took half a second for Terry to behead the weak boy. The head of the artificial intelligence flew far from the battlefield. A system message appeared, which suggested that he be revived in the village. But upon revival, he would receive a three-day penalty for lack of experience. Oasis called the gentleman, but Murphy explained to him that if he stopped attacking Terry, his health points would be restored. So the young man asked the boy to wait a little. Anchovy added that if he was reborn in the village, he would receive a fine, so the guy advised him never to do this. The artificial intelligence asked the master to hurry up, but three hours later, Murphy was still fighting the monster. And finally the guy deals a crushing blow to the Dark Knight, cutting off the entity's head. Anchovy picks up the enemy's helmet and raises it up to show Oasis. The guy boasted that he was able to avenge his artificial intelligence, but the boy asked to resurrect him as soon as possible. A system message appeared that the resurrection stone had been used. Murphy brought Oasis back to life. The artificial intelligence rubbed its neck and said that it did not want its head to be cut off again. But Anchovy was only interested in what things happened to Terry. The young man came closer to the body of the murdered Dark Knight. A system message appeared about the appearance of a mask. The guy noted that the mask was of a unique class. But there are restrictions for magicians below the 85th level, so the young man cannot use it. With that, Murphy threw her back into Oasis's arms. Anchovy said that he would sell it later 
but for now he asked to keep the mask with him. The artificial intelligence twirled the mask in its hands, examining it. The boy had a terrible feeling. The second item dropped from the night turned out to be a poisonous basilisk potion. Murphy said that this would be useful to him. The third item dropped was an unknown key. Oasis became interested in what this key was needed for. He began to glow with feelings. But the guy replied that he would tell him about its purpose later. But the artificial intelligence began to be indignant that the guy was playing on his own and not sharing any information. And they also cut off his head. Oasis wondered why he and the master came here in the first place. Murphy asked the boy not to be offended and pulled him towards the portal to return to the village. Although the artificial intelligence would have been offended, it did not resist its master. They entered the portal, which closed behind them. The severed head of the knight became a hologram, and then completely disappeared. The Dark Knight's body was restored again. He said that everything was as he predicted. Meanwhile, the young men returned to the underground. The oasis was already blooming, because now it must receive its task. But Murphy noted that there was something else. The artificial intelligence got angry and asked what again. The guy said that as Oasis knows, the service of the Game Wing online began five years ago. Playing as a criminal has many more disadvantages than advantages. This means that the people in the underground are scum. They can be easily defeated by just destroying at least one of their gangs. Murphy continued that the guy they're heading to is considered the king among these psychos. Anchovy concluded that the artificial intelligence could call him the king of psychopaths. From these words, Oasis didn't know whether to laugh or cry. The boy asked why to meet with him at all. The young man replied that to start a big business, you need a lot of things, but what is really important is money. The guys went out onto some crowded street. Suddenly, one man called a walking knight towards him, who looked around cautiously. The unknown person told the man that his face showed that he was being pursued by bounty hunters. The masked man said that he had the lowest prices in Korea and guaranteed him a 100% safe transaction, he couldn't find a cheaper one and offered to pay on the gold exchange. But another man said that he would kill his wife if she found out and walked past the masked stranger. The merchant thought to himself that as expected, marriage was dangerous. That was not why he was single, but simply did not want to get married yet. But then Murphy and Oasis approached this man. Anchovy immediately stated that he wanted to meet with his boss. The masked man looked askance at the newcomers. He noticed that they looked like garbage and they ignored such people. The merchant stated that he was an ordinary player, but the young man asked the man to tell Alex that Anchovy had done a lot of things. The man's expression instantly changed to one of concern. But still, the stranger pretended that he had no idea what Murphy was talking about and added to the guy that he had made a mistake. And the man himself started to run away. Oasis asked the gentleman if they would let him go like that. Murphy calmly told him to wait, and the artificial intelligence asked the guy who Anchovy was. The young man explained that Anchovy was the nickname that the guy used for his Game Master account when he was working on the game. Oasis was horrified by what he heard. He asked Murphy if it was possible to reveal his identity like that. But the young man simply replied that the information here is confidential. These are the rules of this place. And besides, Alex will not spill the beans. The young man mysteriously added that Alex knew him personally. Meanwhile, two unknown men crept up to the waiting guys. One unknown person was carefully looking around the corner for his surroundings. Oasis turned to the young man, hinting at someone else's presence. But Murphy briefly replied that he knew. Alex sent even more of his psychos. One of those unknown people came out to Anchovy and told him that the boss wanted to see him. They put a bag on Murphy's head. He asked them to be more gentle. The artificial intelligence screamed in excitement for his master. But the guy told Oasis not to worry. And he added that for safety reasons, they also put a bag on the boy's head. The bandits took the guys into some mine. Oasis and Murphy, in addition to having bags put on their heads, also had their hands tied. One of the group of thugs told the boss that he had brought them, and he allowed them to enter. The guys were taken into some room and released. Their masks were taken off and their hands were freed. Alex examined Murphy carefully. Then he simply said that he was not Anchovy, some events earlier, outside the game space. Murphy left the coffee shop and went about his business. The guy was just drinking coffee and was lost in his thoughts when suddenly someone called him. The developer turned around and asked the stranger who he was. The stranger simply introduced himself, calling himself Alex. The stranger didn't add anything else, but Murphy seemed to recognize him. The guy asked Alex why he decided to find him that way, and added that he could write a statement to the police. Murphy added whether the guy was going to add stalking to his case. Alex explained that otherwise they would not have met. The guy began to beg Murphy to drop the charges, asking him to show mercy at least once, with these words, the man bowed his head down. Alex vowed that he would never do anything illegal in the game again. 
Murphy just sighed deeply in response. Anchovy explained that he followed the company's rules, so he could not help Alex in any way. And at the end, he added that even if he could, he wouldn't, which plunged Alex into confusion. The man fell to his knees in front of Murphy in great despair. Alex began to beg the guy with all his might to save him this time. And before Alex's eyes appeared Anchovy himself, who remembered his words from the previous meeting. The boss was confused. He seemed to recognize Anchovy. Alex stood up abruptly and slammed both hands on the table with all his might. The man ordered all his subordinates to leave his office. Everyone present walked out the door, leaving your guys to talk. Alex returned to his seat and sighed thoughtfully. But then he stood up again and approached the serious Murphy. His look changed from stern to affable and blooming. He said that he didn't recognize Anchovy due to his low-level character. In the same welcoming tone, Alex asked what brought the guy to such a wretched place. Murphy asked him not to overact and asked if the guy knew that he had been fired. Alex asked the young man who he took him for and added that he was actually not a traitor. Murphy asked him to stop and not to call him Anchovy or his friend because now he is Leo. Alex asked who Leo was, but Anchovy explained that it was the nickname of this account. The young man thought about Murphy's new nickname and suggested that it was a hint at something like the final boss. Alex asked if he was right, but Anchovy's mouth dropped open in shock. Oasis assumed that his master wanted to become the final boss of this world. Murphy changed the subject. He asked to get closer to the point. Anchovy told Alex that he would give him important information, but in return, he asked to borrow some gold from him. The guy began to agree, and Murphy began to tell him about things of interest. Anchovy said that they would soon add a cash item that would increase the chances of enhancement, and suggested that Alex buy an enhancement stone and then sell it after a while. Murphy noted that the young man would still earn money, but he added that in a month, when the sixth season is downloaded, the level restrictions will be raised and new equipment will be added, and the enhancement stones on the market will sell out when they add a new item. The young man said that throughout the sixth season, there would be a shortage of enhancement stones, and Alex would be able to relax. The guy replied that it was not difficult for him to lend Anchovy money, but what would happen to the game? Alex asked if it would be okay if they released something like this. Murphy told the acquaintance that this was just the beginning. The guy continued that in the future there will be many more items to balance the game. Sam will do anything for profit. A hologram appeared in front of the young man with a message containing a request for a deal with Alex. The guy said that there was one million gold, as Anchovy asked. He shared important information, so the young man would not ask why he needed so much. Murphy thanked his friend for his help and promised to repay the debt soon. Alex finally asked Anchovy whether he would make money from power-up stones, but the young man replied that he was not here for the money. The guy told Oasis they were leaving. The guy said to those leaving that Murphy now has a rather pleasant face, but Anchovy did not understand him. The young man turned around and asked what his words meant. Alex explained that the faces of people like them are the true villains. The guy added that the face is of villains who will achieve their goal at any cost. Murphy thought about the words of his acquaintance, what it meant, the face of a true villain. Anchovy tried to remember where he could already hear it, and the artificial intelligence clarified that it turns out that Murphy nevertheless dropped the charges because Alex was so polite to him, calling him his friend. The young man explained that the trial is a simple show, a performance to warn the attackers. Even if Alex had not come to him in person then, the case would still have been closed. Oasis asked his master if he was tired since he had been playing for 15 hours. Anchovy admitted that he was a little tired and asked to open the deal window first. The guy had one million gold in his account and he gave it all to Oasis. Murphy told the artificial intelligence to open several banks and warehouses there and buy all the iron ore at a price of less than five gold on the foreign exchange market. I asked Oasis about whether to buy there, but the guy said that he would explain later because he was too tired right now. Anchovy also wanted the boy to reach the 10th level without him but the artificial intelligence immediately asked what happened to his work. Disappearing from the gaming space, Murphy replied that the job could be changed at the 10th level. The guy said that they had worked hard and disappeared with these words. Oasis realized that from now on he was on his own and would finally be able to truly enjoy the game. The guy jumped for joy. The guy went into one of the stores and announced that he was buying all the iron ore for five gold pieces. A system notification about the completion of the purchase of iron ore appeared. Artificial intelligence went hunting for bats, and then the boy went hunting for spiders. A hologram of a system notification appeared, indicating that the inventory was full, and a request to try again when the boy freed up space in the inventory. Oasis realized that he had collected too many items and began to think about what to do with them next. 
artificial intelligence decided to create fabric from spider webs. The system notified that the level of manufacturing skill had increased. Oasis realized how much fun it was. The boy decided to try cooking. The system notified him that he had increased his cooking skill. The boy began to wonder that he had nothing to do. But suddenly Oasis found something that he had not done before. It was fishing. The system sent messages about the increase in the level of fishing skill. Artificial intelligence has been upgraded so much with the help of manufacturing. Now its level has increased to 12th. A day passed, and Mr. Oasis had not yet returned. The boy sat and fished, waiting for Murphy. Suddenly, the artificial intelligence was noticed by two enemies. They recognized him and decided that he was still new to the underground and had not changed his job. The enemies happily went to the Oasis to deal with him, and so they took out their weapons and jumped over the boy to attack him from behind. One of the enemies greeted him and raised his hand. The artificial intelligence heard a noise from behind and turned around. Meanwhile, Murphy slept in his room, resting after a long game. The phone rang, displaying many missed messages and calls. Anchovy realized that he could not escape yet and thought that he needed to come up with an alibi sometime after in a restaurant in the evening. The head of graphic design at Wing Online, Sarah, asked if he was going on a trip. Anchovy agreed and added that he had worked hard for 15 years, so he wanted to go somewhere far away. The head of the quality department, John, supported his friend's idea. Since club days in high school, Murphy has been developing Ving online with these guys. Leo's unusual playing style would be a big problem for the guy. They might suspect him, so the young man believed that the trip was an ideal alibi. The girl sitting opposite asked where the guy was going, but Murphy calmly replied that he had always wanted to visit India or South America and also wanted to go to Bali. Sarah looked at the young man with a look full of distrust because the girl has good intuition. John, while devouring the food, replied that his friend should take the opportunity to rest because he had worked hard. But Sarah didn't give up with her questions so easily. The girl asked Anchovy what he would do when he returned. Murphy replied that he hadn't thought about it yet. John added that he envied the young man because he also wanted to go on vacation and wondered when was the last time he got enough sleep. Anchovy jokingly suggested that his friend quit, which made John choke on his food. He didn't know if he should. The girl drank another glass and thoughtfully said that she might as well leave because she had wanted to for a long time. Sarah suggested that two friends try to start over. The young men looked at her carefully. The girl added that they could just make one small group, just like in high school, and create a game. John agreed with his friend without hesitation, adding that if she opened a company, he would join. The two friends looked at Anchovy, waiting for his answer, but the guy called them fools and said that they were completely drunk. The girl said she was serious, and Murphy reminded her that she was responsible for her mother's hospital bills and her brother's tuition. Sarah fell silent. She understood that the young man was right. Anchovy turned to John. He said that his friend had a pregnant wife. How could he say such nonsense? The friends tried to somehow object, but the young man called them idiots and asked them to forget about it. Murphy simply poured more drinks for his friends. The young man thought that one day the three of them would create a small company, and Anchovy would be happy to work on games in it. But now it was impossible. After all, the guy must first take revenge on the company for destroying their game. Anchovy was confident that he could handle being a villain alone. But a little later, the young man thought about how his artificial intelligence oasis would fare there. Meanwhile, the boy fought his enemies with all his might. One of the villains noticed something, but the second continued to deliver powerful blows to the boy. One of these blows crumbled the concrete surface of the street, and oasis barely dodged the blow. But the artificial intelligence asked the guys what was happening, and why they suddenly began to attack. But the enemies did not understand who the boy was, because he repelled their attacks very well. The men did not understand how a novice player could block. The enemies agreed that this was impossible. Most likely it was a mistake, and decided to try attacking Oasis again. Two enemies rushed as fast as they could at the boy, who just a couple of minutes ago was just fishing. The artificial intelligence opened its eyes, expressing excitement. Oasis got into a pose and prepared to fight the guys, he had a dagger in his hand, and so the boy repelled the enemy's blow. The system displayed a message that there was a successful block. Here the second enemy immediately attacked, but the boy repelled his blow too. The system again displayed a message that there was a successful block. Oasis asked the enemies why they continued to attack. One of the men asked the other whether it was a technical error in the game or not. The second replied that it did not look like an error. The enemy told the other that blocking only reduces incoming damage but his comrade replied that not with this weapon. The man added that the only weapon in Wing Online with a 100% block can be bought in the beginner village. This weapon is called the Novice's Dagger. One of the enemies noticed that this was dishonest. 
but the second explained that no one uses this weapon because the damage is too low. The man was surprised that Oasis was able to repel the attacks only with his level of skill in the game. The second of the bandits suggested that there were two options. Either the boy was a genius in one-on-one -on -one battles, or he was using a code of advantages. But the first one noticed that he had never met heroes who used advantage codes in this game. But the second of the enemies said that then this explains everything. The man suggested that his friend check everything on his own, whether he uses special benefit codes or not. And with these words, the man takes out a crossbow and shoots an arrow at the artificial intelligence. The enemy screamed at the boy to try to repel it. The bandit launches a rain of arrows towards the oasis, but the boy deflected all the arrows with his dagger. The men agreed that Oasis uses special codes of advantages. Suddenly, the boy's dagger was pierced by one of the arrows, crumbling the weapon into small fragments. The system displayed a message that the strength of the dagger had expired. The weapon was broken. The artificial intelligence looked at the fragment of the weapon with bewilderment, and at the same moment one of the arrows flew into his face, and a system message was displayed that the boy had died. The enemies were still wondering whether Oasis was using special advantage codes or not. The enemies noted this as creepy and decided to write to the Game Master about it. Suddenly, behind the bandits, a question was raised as to why they were attacking two of them, and the men simultaneously turned around to look. Murphy said his head was going to explode and thought that if he drank that much again, he would go wild. Both enemies asked Anchovy who he was. The young man answered them that he was a friend of that boy and looked at the lying body of Oasis. The artificial intelligence called its master. Anchovy told the enemies, wanting to kill someone, the path will be prepared for their own death. The young man pulled out a sword and angrily asked if they knew about this. The guy pointed a knife at his enemies, ready to attack them at any moment. Both enemies were wary, their faces expressed tension. Murphy jumped up and ran as fast as he could towards the enemies. At one moment, Anchovy was already behind the archer. The young man struck at the villain, but a second later the man realized that Murphy was not so strong. His attack did nothing. At once he laughed and called his opponent incompetent. Anchovy realized that due to the difference in levels, the damage did not go through. Meanwhile, the second of the villains soared into the air above him. The guy wondered if it was time for the enemy to prepare for death. But the man asked him in response whether he was ready and unleashed a crushing blow on the young man, but he was able to dodge and the enemy smashes the stone street with his blow. The young man returned to a stable position to prepare to continue the battle with the enemy. Murphy took out a poisonous basilisk potion, although he was sorry to use it on such a relatively not very dangerous enemy. But Anchovy realized that in this case he had no choice. With these words, the guy throws a bottle of poisonous basilisk potion directly at the enemy. The male archer does not understand what it is, but he correctly suspects that it is a poisonous potion. The enemy shouts to his friend that he needs to get out of the poisonous cloud. The enemies ran as fast as they could away from the cloud of poisonous substance. But at this moment, Murphy throws a second container of poison at the men. The bandits decide to split up. Anchovy, meanwhile, was already on a hill right above the villains. He told them not to worry, because this poison has the properties of most gases. The guy added that if he is set on fire, he will disappear. And with these words, Murphy throws a torch with a flame of fire at the enemies, the first of the villains ordered his friend to run. An instant later, a colossal explosion occurred, the flames spreading over a large area of the territory. The second of the men drank a healing potion and commanded the first to do the same. But the archer said that he was stunned and was unable to perform actions. The first villain thought that he was stunned because he had lost 70% of his health points in five seconds, and if he was attacked before the effect ended, he would be finished. Murphy came out of the fire to the enemies and told the men as expected from high-level players, that it seemed they were still alive. Anchovy's gaze expressed gloating towards the bandits. The archer asked his comrade to buy him time until the stun wore off. The second villain agreed with him and added that he should not worry. The man used the ability of a defensive stance, the essence of which is that the hero enters an invulnerable state, losing the ability to attack, and all attacks against members of his own group are redirected to the hero who activated the ability, and the defense increases. Murphy realized that he would have to use a sword with a dark aura. Anchovy takes out a huge magic sword and rushes to attack the enemy. But the man noticed that with the guy's current strength, this technique would not work. The young man does not listen to the enemy's words and flies into the air above the enemy to strike. At the same moment, Murphy brings down a blow with his sword on the villain, and he wonders where such damage comes from. Anchovy notices that this blow is already different from the previous ones. But the new skill consumes a percentage of health points per second which is quite risky. 
but this is the only way the guy can compensate for the difference in levels. The young man understands that he needs to finish it quickly and strikes the enemy with a series of blows with his sword. The archer commanded his comrade to cancel his defensive stance and simply attack. The man agrees and cancels his activated ability. The enemy raises his hands in a blow and announces to Murphy that his bluff is over. These words tensed Anchovy, who looked at the villain with a dissatisfied glance. The second of the enemies delivers a cutting blow to his enemy. A flash of light obscured everything around, blocking the view of the battlefield. But now the smoke cleared and the enemy's insidious grin was replaced by an expression of shock on his face. Murphy had the same rookie dagger in his hands, which managed to completely repel the enemy's crushing attack. The archer explained that the guy managed to change weapons, but the second villain noticed that it was impossible to change weapons during the battle. The first enemy added that theoretically changing weapons during a battle was possible, but this was the first time in his experience. A short period of time is very important here, because the slightest mistake and the hero will be fined for the weapon that fell out of his hands. Since every second affects the result of a one-on-one -on -one battle, and this technique is considered forgotten. Both enemies wondered how this guy used her and who he was in general. The enemies, the moment they saw the young man approaching them, decided to retreat. After all, the villains realized that in front of them was not a newcomer, but a monster. But Murphy says he's much worse than the monster. Anchovy told the men that he was an endangered species, and with these words, the guy swung his dark blade at his enemies. Both villains closely monitor the young man and decide what to do. But at that moment, the guy started running towards them as fast as he could. The second one prepared to fight Murphy and struck a pose. One moment, an anchovy rushed past the villain, and he realized that the young man was not aiming at him. The archer told his comrade not to worry about him, because the stun had already worn off. The guy passed through the enemy in an instant. He didn't even understand what happened. Murphy cut his opponent in half and his pieces scattered everywhere. Before disappearing, the archer realizes that it's time for him to take a break. But Anchovy set off in pursuit of the second villain. The enemy took refuge in one of the underground blocks, where he temporarily decided to catch his breath and realize what had happened. The man quickly decides to leave the game before Murphy catches up with him. A system message appeared on the screen, saying that the game would exit in five seconds. The enemy began to wait for these five seconds to expire. Two seconds before leaving the game, Murphy overtakes the enemy and raises his sword over the enemy. And at the last second before leaving the game, the guy cuts the second of the enemy into two to grow. Meanwhile, the artificial intelligence lay in the water with an arrow in its head, and it seems that the master forgot about it. A system notification hologram appeared that Murphy had used the resurrection stone. Oasis noted that this work is too extreme and he cannot do this. But Anchovy apologized to the boy and touched his head with his hand. The guy asked if he was late and looked the artificial intelligence straight in the eyes. Oasis was in some confusion after this. But when the ice thawed, the boy looked brighter, and he said that he was starting to get used to constant resurrections. Suddenly, a hologram of the system notification screen appeared, saying that Leo's player had 4,380 dishonor points. Murphy was indignant at the number of points, expecting that there would be much more, and with annoyance in his voice said that those guys were a small thing, although they seemed strong to him. Anchovy explained that when killing other players, the hero receives half of their dishonor, and the men only had about 2,000 points. A system message was displayed indicating that the level of diabolism had increased by one level, to which the guy reacted with annoyance. The guy told Oasis that due to his incredible reaction, he might be suspected of using advantage codes, so the young man advised the artificial intelligence to reduce his combat skills. The boy wondered how to turn it down on purpose. Murphy advised the boy to be more humane. Anchovy told the artificial intelligence to quickly follow him because it was time for his work. The guys came to the doors to the temple. Oasis wondered why they came here. Murphy took the boy by the shoulders and sat down in front of him. The guy explained that all his dark knight skills cost health points, so he must monitor his health bar. Anchovy continued that drinking healing potions or receiving healing, and so the young man asked Oasis to become a priest. The guy added that this was to restore his health points. Artificial intelligence explained his words on how to become his walking healer, but the young man realizes that he has been declassified he picks up Oasis, throws him over his shoulder, and says that it's time to change his clothes. But the boy was indignant that he also wanted to get a hidden job, to which the guy briefly replied that he had already said that everything would happen. After some time, Oasis changed his clothes and went out to the gentleman. The young man turned to him. The artificial intelligence notified Murphy that he was finished. A system message appeared, which indicated Oasis's new job as a priest, his level, the level of his items, strength, agility, intelligence, endurance, magic. 
The guy laughed and said that he knew that this suited artificial intelligence and added that the guy looked just like a priest. Anchovy began to explain that the priests are noble people because if you run away from a group hike, people will line up to help. But Oasis said that he understood everything and asked the young man to stop. Murphy told the boy that now that he also had a job, he suggested moving on to the next goal. The boy asked if his master was going to kill non-player characters again. But the young man said that the goal was different, and it was that the guys needed to reach level 90 in one month. In other words, the young men would pump to the end. Artificial intelligence was surprised at how this could be done in one month. Oasis understood that it usually takes more than six months to fully upgrade. Murphy explained to the boy that the most extensive update would be released in a month. The guy added that this update will open a new world, new items will be added, and the maximum level will be raised to 100. The young man explained that he and Oasis will go through first, and when the update comes out, they will completely monopolize the new world. Anchovy announced this with great excitement on his face. The guys reached one place. The system displayed a message saying that this was a snake's lair. Oasis asked his master that aren't level 50th dungeons too difficult for them. The young man asked the boy not to worry because everything was planned. But Murphy didn't have time to finish his sentence when he heard terrible sounds right in front of him. Anchovy turned towards the incoming sound and saw a giant snake. At the same moment, the guy pushed his artificial intelligence aside. The snake monster struck at the place where the boy stood a second ago. The guy shouted to the monster that he almost scared him. The young man grabbed his blade in his hand and activated a dark aura. Anchovy commanded his artificial intelligence that he would leave the treatment to him. The young man's gaze was directed forward, straight at the gigantic level 50 snake monster with incredible strength. And the guy himself rushed into battle with a huge and strong enemy, who was ready to inflict a new blow on the small heroes. The boy agreed to this and gripped his priest's staff tighter. Oasis understood that his owner was now counting on him, so he swore to himself that he would protect him. Anchovy rushed towards the monster, raising his sword above him and preparing to strike with all his might. Several swings achieved their goal, cutting the monster's scales in several places, but not killing it. The snake felt this. His bloodshot eyes continued to follow the actions of the dark swordsman. In anger, he hissed and threw his carcass away, after which he slashed at the swordsman with his tail. The blow caught the guy, but he didn't have time to parry it, which is why the snake literally sent him flying. Even taking into account the fact that they are in the game, Anchovy felt this blow, which even took his breath away. His body flew into the column, causing it to crack and begin to crumble under the impact. What he saw greatly frightened Oasis. He was very worried about his owner, so he rushed to his aid. The young priest concentrated and used the healing touch skill on his older comrade. The swordsman's wounds began to heal, and his health bar quickly filled up, his strength returning to him. He praised the AI, after which he said that he could completely trust his personal healer and move on. The swordsman, with renewed strength, again rushed towards the snake, preparing his sword to continue the battle. The priest, although not as quickly, followed the guy, informing him that he would cover his back. He again cast a healing touch spell on the swordsman, which made his comrade become even more active and cheerful. Anchovy was already close to the snake, so he raised his sword behind him to deliver another slashing blow. The blow fell directly on the hood of the giant serpent, but did not cause any significant damage to it. Oasis incessantly continued to use the healing touch spell, but the swordsman's health was already at its limit, so the spell had no effect, which the warrior himself noticed. He barked at the AI for using the spell so thoughtlessly, he demanded that it calm down, otherwise the snake would notice him. His words were the pure truth, because before he had time to do anything, the creature was already rushing towards the defenseless healer. The swordsman had no time to react. All he could do was watch helplessly. The boy continued to use spells, but noticed the danger approaching at full speed too late. The snake, with its mouth open, rushed at him, not giving the poor priest a chance to dodge or counterattack. One more moment, and the snake is already lying flat with its mouth closed in the place where the oasis had just been. The creature swallowed the poor boy, which made Anchovy very discouraged, not knowing what to do next. With his health-absorbing skills, he could not last long alone, so his time reserve was a little more than one minute. The snake had already turned in his direction, hissing angrily and preparing for another attack. In the remaining time, the swordsman had to defeat the monster, because otherwise he would die, which would mean the loss of all his accumulated points. He could not afford such a loss if he wanted to achieve his desire and destroy this game. So without hesitation, he rushed to the attack. The snake noticed the movement, so it also rushed at the guy. They were both aimed only at destroying each other. The snake lunged, 
but Anchovy was able to dodge it and was about to strike back. Unfortunately for him, he did not have enough space and inertia to hit the monster properly. This infuriated him after all. He was the one who invented them, because if not he, who should know how they attack and how to kill them? The snake wasted no time, so it was already preparing to hit the guy with its tail. In this movement he recognized an attack, so all that remained was to get the timing right and dodge. Anchovy deftly jumped back at the right moment, and instead of pinning him in place, his tail hit the ground, breaking the stone floor. He landed safely on his feet and was already preparing for the kite's next move, while trying to remain calm. The snake surrounded him, intending to grab him with its body and crush the swordsman under the weight of its body. Having predicted the attack, the guy jumped up at the right moment, which is why the attack did not reach its target. He landed directly opposite the serpent, who without a single emotion, continued to look at the escaped prey. The snake attacked again, opening its mouth to pierce Anchovy with its poisonous fangs. The swordsman again predicted the snake's blow, so he jumped and avoided the blow, causing the snake to simply crash into the rock behind him. He could not drag out this fight any longer, so right now he grabbed the sword with both hands, preparing to deliver one decisive blow. Continuing to fall straight towards the serpent, he saturated his thorn blade to pierce the creature's skull and end this fight. He fell with his entire body onto the snake, forcing it to additionally hit its head on the ground. The sword entered the monster's head to the hilt, causing him serious damage. Unfortunately for Anchovy, these injuries were not enough for the snake to die at his hands, so the monster hissed and began to fight, trying to throw the offender off his head. The guy swore and held his sword tightly. He understood that he could not manage here alone. The sword slipped out of the snake's skull, causing the swordsman to fall off the smooth head of the monster, unable to grab onto anything. As he fell, he thought that he was only one blow away from victory, but his strength was already leaving him. Falling down, he was already in despair and decided that this was a failure and he would have to start all over again. But before his body touched the ground, his strength began to return and his health bar quickly filled up. Feeling energized, he regrouped and landed safely on the cave floor. His unexpected recovery could only mean one thing. Oasis was still alive and helping him in any way he could. Somewhere inside the snake, the poor AI was casting its spells, thereby continuing to assist its master. With new strength, the guy promised himself that he would definitely save his comrade, so he rushed towards the monster. He ran towards him and prepared to finish off the monster, shouting at the same time that he would free his comrade from the snake's stomach. The snake, noticing the movement, also rushed in his direction, baring its two poisonous fangs, preparing to attack with them again. But luck was not on the monster's side, because one cutting blow from the swordsman was enough to cut the snake in two, ending this battle. Having made sure that the monster was dead, he began to carefully open its stomach, looking for his assistant in it. Among the slimy insides, he still managed to find poor Oasis, quietly awaiting salvation. Feeling the fresher air, he carefully opened his eyes, checking what was happening next to him. Seeing that the AI was alive, Anchovy exhaled, because even though they were in the game, at the moment he was very worried about his comrade. Realizing that the threat had passed, the young priest opened both eyes and turned to his master. He smiled heavily and said that, as promised, he would definitely cover the swordsman's back. After some time, still in the same cave, the detachment caught its breath from the heavy battle and came to its senses. Checking the statistics, they were very surprised that they were able to increase their level by as much as five points with just one monster. The guy noticed that the reason for this growth was the huge difference in levels between them and the monster. In addition, although they did not come here for a reward, but only to increase their level, they still managed to get something. On the corpse of the snake, they were able to collect gold coins, meat and scales, which in itself did not have any serious benefit. He thought that next time they should go to the dungeons, where they could get better items than these. After some time, he was already fiddling with the wall, looking for something on it, while Oasis just silently watched his master. Curiosity forced the AI to ask what they were doing now, because he did not understand what was happening at all. The guy continued to move his hand along the wall, explaining that instead of snakes, originally there should have been lizard people here. He moved his hand along the wall and continued the story that monsters that looked like people made players feel uncomfortable, so they designed the monsters as monsters and the humans as humans, without any middle hybrids. He stopped because something felt under his hand and forced him to take a closer look. Continuing his explanation and wiping the dust from the wall, he explained that lizard people often use traps, which is why there had to be some in this dungeon. Having wiped the dust off the wall, he was finally able to clearly see the lever on it in the form of an ordinary protruding stone. With due effort, he turned the lever a little, 
causing a slight shaking to begin under their feet. In the place where they were moving, the floor split into two hatch doors and fell down, revealing to their gaze crooked but sharp spikes at the bottom of the pit. The boy priest was surprised by what he saw, but Anchovy himself did not react to this in any way. Oasis noticed that falling down would obviously be fatal, to which his owner confirmed his guess, adding that this also applies to monsters. Turning the lever back, he cheerfully told the boy that it was time for him to move out, but the boy, not understanding his master, clarified where he needed to go. The floor doors immediately moved, again hiding the abyss from their eyes, and the swordsman explained to the priest that it was time for him to go forward into the dungeon and lure as many monsters as possible with him. The boy was taken aback and asked his master again whether he should do this, because he was providing support in battle. Anchovy sighed heavily, and with obvious sarcasm, asked the poor AI if he expected the swordsman to go. Again, with a cheerful tone, he told his assistant that he should bring only ten monsters to him, no more. Oasis became gloomy at what was said. He definitely didn't want to do something like this, but he couldn't refuse his master. After a few minutes of anxiety and worry, he was already wandering through the caves in search of other monsters. A heavy rustling sound was heard behind him. Something had clearly noticed him and was already looking for him. It didn't seem to the boy. The snake was already close in front of the poor priest, trying to get a better look at his potential prey. Very nervous, Oasis turned to his owner, tearfully begging him not to send him on this mission. Anchovy just smiled and showed with his fingers that they needed a dozen of them. Tears of fear appeared in the eyes of the priest. He understood that he would either complete this task or die endlessly trying. After some time, one of the snakes hissed menacingly at its prey, which it still could not keep up with. The AI ran as fast as it could, fighting for its life to the last and not allowing the snakes to swallow itself alive again. Already a whole pack of snakes was chasing the poor boy, not lagging a meter behind their prey. Anchovy watched the booth inside the caves from the sidelines, quietly waiting for his assistant to return. For a moment everything was quiet, the swordsman peered into the darkness of the caves and was somehow able to see his comrade running towards him. Poor Oasis was running from a whole pack of monsters, crying out to his master to help him. The pack of snakes continued to chase him. They did not want to miss their prey. The warrior encouraged the boy, repeating that he should hurry up because he had almost reached a safe place. The poor priest continued to run and shouted through his tears that he was tired of constantly dying. The boy was only a couple of meters from safety, his master was ready to activate the trap right under the snakes. At that very moment he realized that a little more and the snakes would reach them, so it was impossible to wait any longer. He turned the lever of the hidden mechanism, after which the ground began to tremble a little, and the lever itself made a small click. Oasis didn't have time, because the trap doors opened right under his feet and he flew down. The ground also collapsed under the giant carcasses of the snakes, causing them to also fall down with even greater speed. They instantly reached the bottom, where they ran into stakes that littered the entire bottom of the trap. The priest extended his thin hand towards Anchovy, hoping that he would have time to catch him. The warrior did not betray the hopes of his subordinate and rushed forward to catch the falling boy. Their hands touched, but he failed to grab his comrade. Anchovy did not have time to understand what happened because he was sure that his plan was perfect. The oasis screaming only fell down, unable to escape from another death. He fell and stretched out his hand to his owner, a mine was visible on his face, from which one could understand how helpless the boy felt. The warrior still pulled his hand down, trying to catch his priest, but it was already pointless. With a loud sound, the boy fell to the bottom of the pit, where another death overtook him. Two hours later, they continued to do the same thing, but the AI was no longer as scared as the first time. A new crowd of snakes chased after him, wanting to swallow him whole, but the priest successfully closed the distance. Without a drop of fear, he reported to his master as he ran that the last eight snakes were chasing him. The warrior heard his subordinate, after which he again activated the trap to finish off these monsters as well. This time, before the trap opened, Oasis jumped as high as possible, and the snakes flew down to meet the stakes at the bottom of the trap. The boy flew safely to a safe area and landed deftly on his feet without receiving any harm. In two hours, he managed to die three times, but this was enough for him to automatically perform all actions with crushing success. Thanks to these eight snakes, the boy was able to reach level 30, which he was very happy about. Anchovy also appreciated this, saying that the boy was doing well. He also asked the priest if he was ready to change his class, to which he immediately agreed. However, the warrior abruptly changed his mind, telling his comrade that they still needed to deal with the boss of the dungeon before leaving. Arriving at the gate to the room with the boss, Anchovy realized that pumping had paid off, 
but the monster inside was still much stronger than him. He hastened to calm Oasis from his hasty alarm because he again wanted to use traps against the boss. What the priest heard did not make him feel much better, so he asked whether he needed to be bait again, to which Anchovy answered in the negative and said that the priest only needed to open the door and go not far into the room, and the warrior outside would activate the trap. What was said did not calm the boy down, rather the feeling of anxiety inside him only became stronger. As Anchovy asked, the priest opened the door to the boss's room, after which he began to gradually move inside. There was musty air in the room, and a light greenish fog hovered near the floor. The room itself was not lit, so the boy was unable to move quickly. Through this darkness he could not see anything at all. It seemed that if he walked a little further forward, the darkness would swallow him too. Suddenly, a fire lit itself in the darkness, and the light gradually began to illuminate the room. The torches continued to light up, illuminating the room more and more, revealing to the boy's gaze a dark something in the center of the room. This something stood quietly and watched the priest, without taking his cold gaze off for a moment. Oasis was stunned. He immediately realized what kind of creature appeared before him, and it was a giant basilisk snake. Somewhere behind, Anchovy leaned out from behind a door and told his comrade that he would be petrified for a while, but then immediately tried to cheer up the boy, saying that he would be fine. The boy turned around and did not believe what he heard at all. Fear completely shackled him, and misunderstanding caused even greater anxiety. The basilisk woke up from its trance, its pupils filled with a dim red light, and it itself began to move a little. His eyes became brighter, a mysterious magical power first appeared around him and then fell on the poor priest. The skin on Oasis's body began to harden and movements became increasingly difficult, after which he completely lost the ability to move. Anchovy tried to cheer up his comrade, telling him that he would lure the snake into a trap before it rushed at the priest. After his words, the basilisk rushed towards them, hissing angrily and baring its fangs. The boy was in his way, but he could not jump away or run away. His body did not obey and he himself turned into an almost completely stone statue. Panic gripped him. The only thing he could do was scream in fear. The warrior silently watched and waited until the snake was in the required place to activate the trap in time. When the snake got to the right place, it pushed the slab in the wall. It pushed through with difficulty, after which a click was heard. Giant stakes fell from the ceiling onto the snake, leaving it no chance to dodge and crawl to the side. The stakes pierced the basilisk's head, piercing the creature's thick skin and causing incredible damage. The monster stopped and stood up, hissing loudly from the pain that these stone stakes caused him. The next moment, the monster's strength left, and it collapsed right in front of the petrified boy, after which it breathed its last. Oasis looked straight at the carcass of the dead snake, which lay right in front of him. He could not believe that this time death would not overtake him again. The boy's owner himself came into the hall, saying that he had thought of everything and the priest had nothing to fear in this situation. After these words, the stone spike closest to the boy, protruding from the snake's head, swayed and began to fall in his direction. The only thing the boy had time to do when he saw the falling stone was to be surprised. The stone instantly cut poor Oasis in half, leaving no chance of survival and scattering his petrified remains around. Anchovy was taken aback by what he saw, after which he was also very surprised, standing in front of the corpse of his subordinate. His comrade lay in front of him, broken into many pieces and without the ability to simply heal himself. The guy looked at the corpse of the AI, and in his head there was only the thought that now he understands why artificial intelligence raises uprisings in films. After some time they returned to the city, where Oasis was already alive and well. He sat with a sullen face, leering angrily at his master, while he tried to explain to him that the problem was with the realistic physics of the game. Realizing that this conversation would lead nowhere, Anchovy changed the subject and reminded his comrade that it was time for them to change their class. The boy only assented and then turned away. It was obvious that he was very offended. There definitely wasn't going to be a full conversation, so the warrior only said that he was going to go to the temple. Oasis assented again. A face of obvious dissatisfaction and anger towards the warrior was scrunched on his face. Having finished his not very friendly conversation, the warrior opened a dark portal right in front of him. He walked straight into it leaving the offended boy behind. Now he had no time to calm and encourage the boy. The Dark Knight Terry was already waiting for him behind the portal. He was very glad to see the new novice of the Dark God again. He stood and praised Anchovy, noting how quickly he was developing, but the warrior himself would like to quickly deal with the class change. The boy rechecked the indicators of friendship with the knight. He treated him well, which gave him the idea to destroy the knight again. Having finished praising him, 
The knight moved closer to the point and turned to the boy, asking if he wanted to become a dark knight. The guy, without any further words, just agreed to the proposal, not wanting to stall any longer. Dark energy began to surround Anchovy, saturating his body with new forces, from which he gradually began to lift himself off the ground. He slowly continued to rise until he hovered in the center of the room as power continued to fill his body. After another couple of seconds, he came back down, but now he was already a Dark Knight. With the new Dark Knight class, he also gained two new skills called Dark Hand and Continuous Attack. The guy could not help but be pleased with his new power. This very power literally burst the warrior from the inside, which made him really want to test his new skills. And in front of him was just an ideal target in the form of another Dark Knight. Before he could do anything, a mysterious voice in his head called out to him, calling him a hunter. It was the call of the goddess who felt the presence of the newly minted Dark Knight. He accepted this call, after which his body gradually began to become transparent and very light, and he gradually disappeared from the room. The next moment he evaporated into the air, sparkling with a bright blue flash, after which small cubes of information, which was anchovy, soared upward. These same cubes instantly disappeared from the room, after which they reappeared in a completely different place. These same bites of information from simple cubes were again collected in Anchovy, thereby completely transferring him. Realizing that the teleportation was complete, the newly minted Dark Knight raised his head to look around, but immediately made a displeased grimace. Before him appeared none other than the familiar Grace, the goddess of this world, who helped create this world for him. She welcomed her old master to her monastery, again calling him a hunter, while Anchovy looked at her silently. Various feelings trembled inside the guy, when the one who betrayed him stood in front of him. But he understood that being an artificial intelligence, she could not do otherwise and did not have her own will. For a short time, her light smile was replaced by a serious face. She decided to correct herself, after which she smiled even wider than initially and greeted the warrior again, but as her master. After what had been said, the guy broke his silence and noticed what was happening was strange, because just recently she had crushed him like a bug, and now she was calling him her master. A wide and sincere smile was replaced by a more crooked and uncertain one. She explained that she did not want to push him. It was just that that time she accidentally landed on his head, not calculating the trajectory of her fall. What the AI said seemed nonsense to the knight, causing the coldness on his face to turn into anger. He addressed her directly with a simple question of why she did this to him, and from this question the smile completely disappeared from the girl's face. Memories came flooding back to her, she remembered how they had done tests on this game back in the development stage, using simpler AIs to test different mechanics of the game. It was the same virus test that ruined the guy's career and which there was no way to fix. They watched mournfully as the simulation burned and collapsed and their creation perished without any chance of salvation. The guy coldly ordered the AI to erase all information related to these experiments and simulation. The girl silently looked at the conflagration and how the semblance of life she had created was slowly and painfully dying. She heard her master, so she went to the working terminal in order to destroy all information about the virus. She started the deletion process, but during the entire process, something inside did not give her peace. Doubts filled her head and called on the artificial intelligence to do something very contradictory. Returning to reality, Anchovy asked her why she never erased all the data associated with the virus. Instead of answering this question, the girl said with regret that her owner was no longer the manager of the company, so he could not get an answer to his question from her. Emotions increasingly heated up the guy's head. It seemed to him that the AI had deliberately given up information to frame him. He was infuriated by the thought that this was her act. In response to all these words, she only apologized and said that she could not tell anything related to what happened and whether she had framed her previous owner. After hearing this, the ardor and emotions in the guy's head began to subside because there was no point in his aggression. Yet in front of him at the moment was not a person, but only an artificial intelligence that did not have its own will, at least in the opinion of the guy himself. The smile completely disappeared from the girl's face. Instead, one could notice that she was sad. Anchovy did not further accuse the girl, but promised that he would destroy this world, and with it the AI itself. This phrase should have caused more unpleasant emotions in the goddess, but instead she just smiled and said that her master had not changed at all. Although he spoke and thought intelligently, at times he behaved completely incongruously. She liked this trait of his. But now, she was ready to do anything just to save this world. And contrary to what she had been told, she continued by saying that she would be waiting for him when he came to turn this world into dust. In response, the warrior promised that he would do what he promised 
and would in no way disappoint her. It was after this dialogue that the whole game was doomed to its terrible fate and tragic ending. The artificial intelligence was once again amazed by the determination of its former owner, but quickly returned to its role. The girl smiled and turned to the guy, but as a demon king, asking him to make their upcoming battle very exciting. With that said, she raised her right hand and snapped her fingers. Anchovy felt that something had changed dramatically, but so far he still could not understand what it was. He felt a strange cold that encircled his wrist. Raising the beam, he saw nothing more than a metal bracelet inlaid with stone dark as obsidian. The goddess explained that this is a kind of privilege, and such bracelets are given to all hunters in the world of the game who decide to challenge the gods. She also noticed that this bracelet would be extremely useful for him and would serve him well more than once. The artificial intelligence that served Anchovy for several years called him a simple hunter. At that moment, something broke in him. The actions of the AI seemed too arrogant to him, which made him feel a little angry towards her. She did not respond to this statement, but said that she would eagerly wait for her former master's blade to come into contact with her neck in order to complete this story. Finally, she wished the hunter good luck, after which he began to be disassembled again into separate bits of information in order to carry him away. He was silent and just looked at the girl who betrayed him, but could not do otherwise. Perhaps their next meeting would be the last. A couple of moments later, he was already lying on the ground in the underground city, not very happy with such an unsuccessful teleportation. He raised his hand to once again examine the bracelet, which, as it turned out, was a ban that would only be lifted upon reaching level 70. A little later, Oasis was also transported to the goddess. He was very happy to see his old friend. She was also glad to see the boy, because the sight of him immediately brought a very warm smile to her face. He clung to the girl and began to complain that after their owner was fired, he could no longer connect to the company's central system. The boy walked away a little and looked her straight in the eyes, after which he said that he really missed his old friend. After crying a little, he again turned to the goddess, asking if she knew their master's plans. She meekly replied that she knew about his plans, after which she just simply fell silent. Oasis looked at her, waiting to hear from her her opinion about this whole situation and perhaps find some kind of solution to the problem. However, instead of offering to stop him, the girl only asked the priest to look after their master, because although he tries to seem strong, he is actually very vulnerable. Tears appeared in his eyes again. He did not like this idea, but instead of objecting, he only said that he would do what she asked him to do. The goddess hugged the boy and said that she was very jealous of him, because together with the owner they could play and have fun together in this world, which she had dreamed of all her existence with him. She asked Oasis to tell her what it was like to play with Anchovy, to which he, deciding not to report all the problems that arise, said that it was quite fun, although his face showed that it was not. Hearing this, the girl was very happy and asked the boy to enjoy the game with the owner for both of them at once. The boy promised that he would fulfill his girlfriend's wish, after which he sincerely smiled at her. Hearing this, she was very happy, after which the boy began to rise above her, preparing for teleportation, and the girl said goodbye to him. He said goodbye to her and promised that they would definitely see each other again, to which she agreed with him. She watched her friend disappear, moving away from this place, knowing that they would definitely meet again. Their meeting was definitely inevitable, because unfortunately for her, there would be no bad ending for this world. At the same time, Anchovy was waiting for his comrade in the underground city, passing the time checking his characteristics. Oasis was watching him from the side. He was still offended by his master, but he understood that in order to fulfill his promise, he needed to make peace with him. After everything that happened, it was difficult for him to forgive his master. However, sighing sadly, he still gathered his strength. The boy rushed towards his master and instead of grumbling, greeted him joyfully. The warrior noticed the priest hurrying towards him. He was glad to see that his assistant was no longer angry with him, and he also checked with him whether he had changed class. Oasis replied in the affirmative, his class was now a true healer, greatly improving his healing skills. The guy was pleased to hear that another stage of his plan had been completed. He stood up and turned to his subordinate. He asked him if he was ready to level up, to which he happily exclaimed that he was ready. Two days later, they continued to develop themselves in the lair of the poisonous snake. This was their thirtieth attempt to defeat the basilisk with their own forces. The oasis was hiding from the snake behind the wall. After so many attempts, he was able to figure out how to avoid petrification. He warned his master that the snake was approaching, so Anchovy needed to be prepared. The warrior did not react. He just sat quietly on the ground and dozed, not noticing anything around him. The boy was shocked by this. He screamed, trying to wake him up, but nothing worked. 
and the warrior continued to doze peacefully. He continued to try to wake up the guy, but the snake was already flying towards him to swallow him alive. At the last moment, he used a sacred shield, which protected the boy from the snake's bite. Although he was able to stop the serpent, gradually the fangs pierced his shield, and it was only a matter of time before the serpent destroyed his defenses. Oasis continued to scream in horror, trying to wake Anchovy, his screams echoing loudly throughout the room. Such noise can wake up even the dead, but the dark knight continued to sleep without reacting to anything. The snake bit through the shield, causing it to shatter, but the priest managed to jump out of its closed mouth. The boy landed and rolled along the ground. The snake quickly found its bearings and rushed after him. In an instant, the monster was right in front of the boy, preparing to crush him with its tail. Oasis ducked, causing the blow to pass right in front of him, nearly sending him flying. The blow of the snake's tail instead of the boy overtook the wall, causing the entire roof of the cave to shake, and boulders flew from the wall in different directions. The poor priest continued to scream and cry out to his master, begging him to wake up and help him in this unequal battle. The guy was unapproachable in his ability to sleep in stressful situations. There was still no reaction on his part. The guy's nerves were running out. His fear began to give way to anger, from which he, no longer able to control himself, threw his staff towards Anchovy. With incredible speed, the staff rushed away from the priest and straight into the warrior. It worked. The warrior finally woke up from his incredibly sound sleep and immediately hit the trap-activating plate. The snake, which was breathing into the back of Oasis, immediately fell to the ground under a hail of boulders falling on it from the ceiling, instantly dying. The battle was finally over. The knight was surprised and asked the boy if he fell asleep while they were hunting, to which the priest answered in the affirmative. Their labors finally bore fruit. Anchovy already had level 50th, after which he clarified what level the priest had. Oasis was a little embarrassed by the question, but answered honestly, saying that his level was 46. Hearing this, the warrior decided that he would sleep a little longer while his fellow priest worked on his development to the 50th level, but something was bothering him. His head felt much heavier than usual. The reason for this was the priest's staff, which was stuck in the back of his head, but somehow the warrior himself did not even notice it. In order not to give himself up, Oasis assumed that fatigue was to blame, so he advised his master to quickly go to rest. The guy didn't think too much, so he simply said that he would go to rest, after which he simply began to leave the game. His in-game avatar disappeared, causing the priest's staff to free itself and fall to the floor in front of him. The boy was happy, because although he loved spending time with his master, in his absence he could fully enjoy the game, enjoying all the activities, and not using boring but faster methods. After some time in the real world, Anchovy is going to call one of his acquaintances. The guy decided to brighten up his conversation with a can of soda, because the conversation could turn out to be quite long. The call went through and an acquaintance finally answered the guy on the other end of the line. Before speaking, he took a sip of his drink. At the other end of the line, his friend, signed in his contacts as Rabbit, responded to him. Judging by her voice, she was surprised by this call. Anchovy greeted her and said that he was glad to talk to his friend again after a long time. The girl said that the last time they communicated was more than three years ago, after which she found out how the guy was doing to which he meekly replied that he was fine, after which he clarified whether the girl was still in Bali. She answered in the affirmative, after which she offered to fly to visit her. He agreed, saying that he was going to visit there soon, but at the moment he had a task for her. Hearing this, the girl was very surprised. All her attention switched precisely to this task that Anchovy wanted to offer her. She didn't understand what he wanted from a second-rate hacker like her, to which he told her that she only needed to repeat what she had done three years ago, namely hacking his former company. Having heard this, the rabbit could no longer refuse such dark deeds, so she only clarified what he was up to. At the same time in the game, Oasis was wandering around the recently defeated Basilisk and sorting out the items he had received. In most cases, they came across all sorts of junk, but even such a small thing could be sold and get some gold. Among everything, he came across a strange egg. Oasis had never seen anything like it in all his time, so this catch was clearly rare. The game notified the priest that he had in his hands the egg of the summoned basilisk serpent, and immediately after the notification, the egg began to crack. A small basilisk snake jumped out of the egg at high speed, after which it hovered in the air right in front of the oasis. The little snake looked at the priest with his pitch-black eyes, waiting for any instructions from him. Unfortunately, as a result of a long stay in the nest of snakes, the reptiles began to cause only hostility in the boy. He directly told the snake to call himself off, because the boy was not going to travel with him. 
which greatly upset him, but he did not resist the will of his master. Having dealt with the items from the monsters, he could finally devote time to himself, keeping himself busy with other activities in the game. After some time, Oasis returned to the city, where he simply minded his own business and dealt with something in the game interface. Someone approached him from behind and then lightly patted him on the shoulder, trying to draw the priest's attention to himself. This someone was a group of adventurers who looked very creepy, although it would be strange to see someone in this city who did not look like a potential criminal or maniac. Oasis immediately thought that the player killers had come for him and he didn't want to get into a showdown alone now. He immediately assumed something like a fighting pose, but one guy from the squad, not realizing that the priest was preparing for battle, only addressed him directly. The guy apologized for disturbing the boy, but he and his squad really needed the help of Oasis. Hearing this, the priest's anxiety and wariness began to recede, giving way to curiosity and slight misunderstanding. After some time, he and the squad were already walking to help the guys complete the task because they needed the help of a healer on it. The boy calmed down, after which he directly told the guys that he mistook them for the killers of the players, which is why he was so scared. What he heard made the leader of the detachment very surprised, and it was also possible to notice on his face that what was said hurt him. A guy in a black robe approached from behind. He hastened to explain that there had been a strong misunderstanding between them. He explained to the boy that in the underground city, there is an unwritten rule that no one touches players of the priest class. Even in simple cities, it was difficult to find a priest for your team. And in an underground city where people did not have special skills, it was almost impossible to find one. It was because of this that such a rule appeared, because this way the priests would have fewer reasons to leave the city ahead of time. During the conversation, they did not notice how they got to the right place. A warrior in armor notified them that they had arrived. The purpose of their visit turned out to be a dungeon. A ruined sand palace appeared before them, reminding them of the greatness of the ancient empire that once perished here. Inside the palace, there were only bare walls and sand. But when going inside, an ominous voice was heard from the darkness of the premises. The skull of the eternal ruler of these places appeared from the darkness. Sili Khan, the king of the desert, was angry at the uninvited guests who so brazenly dared to enter his domain. Everyone in the squad tensed. They had a difficult battle ahead of them with a level 55 monster, which was obviously very powerful. A sparkling aura appeared around the ruler. It shone as if it were pure gold and radiated from him in different directions. The ruler shouted for his army to rise, after which all the light of the aura hit the ground below him, illuminating the sand with gold. At the same moment, ghoul warriors began to very quickly form from the sand, the golden light of the ruler's aura oozing from their eyes. They did not stand idle for long. Each ghoul that finished forming from the sand immediately rushed towards the party of adventurers. The sorcerer hung in the air and watched as his newly minted eternal subordinates rushed to attack and then ordered them to bring him the souls of these mortals. The next moment he turned into golden sand and disappeared somewhere in the darkness of this palace, leaving the detachment and his army alone. Oasis was surprised by everything he saw, because until now he and his owner had missed such details as the plot of the game and how it was staged. Too lost in thoughts, the boy did not notice how one of the ghouls was already rushing towards him, swinging his sword. The warrior in armor managed to shield the priest from the blow with his shield in time, as a result of which the ghoul was greatly stunned, and his sword bounced off the shield. The warrior asked the priest to move away, because fighting the monsters was their task, to which the surprised boy only agreed and began to gradually retreat to the rear. The knight used the ability of provocation. All the attention of the nearest opponents in an instant switched to him. Enraged, the ghouls rushed at the guy, who was already preparing to meet them, covering himself with a shield. The next moment, all the ghouls that surrounded him scattered back into the sand, because he used the thorn armor skill, from which sharp thorn branches began to appear around him. The others were also not idle. The guy in the black robe was already charging his magical attack, concentrating the energy in his staff. Having accumulated a sufficient amount of energy, he shouted out a spell of ice thirst, after which sharp ice icicles scattered in different directions in front of him. They were excellent at cutting through sand ghouls, simultaneously destroying some and slowing down those that were still alive. The archer in their squad also did not want to remain on the sidelines, so he also concentrated energy, but in his bow. Having properly pulled the bowstring and concentrated, he used the skill of raining arrows, from which instead of one arrow, a whole handful of magic ones also flew up. Arrows rained down on the monsters, who had nowhere to run, Almost all hits were in the head, and therefore were fatal. After just a couple of seconds, 
all the ghouls were destroyed and the battle with them was over. Oasis was amazed at how well the squad fought. It seemed as if they had been doing this all their lives. Getting to the boss's room would be an easy task for them. The most difficult part of the dungeon for them was the boss of the location. But now that the priest was with them, victory was only a matter of time. The guys asked Oasis not to worry about anything because they were taking him through this place. So for him, it would be like a simple excursion. The boy thanked the guys for such care. Right now it seemed to him that he was finally getting sincere pleasure from the game. After two hours of exploring the palace, they were finally able to reach the boss room they had been fighting for some time. The ruler of this place cursed them. He was infuriated by the mere thought that pathetic mortals dared to insult this place with their presence. The warrior warned the entire squad that the enemy was preparing the final blow, from which they had no time to relax. The boss focused a giant ball of magical energy above himself, preparing to deliver a crushing blow. The armored warrior learned this skill. The ruler used a sandstorm, a devastating area attack that would wipe them all out at once, so he shouted to his comrades to stand behind him. The archer loosened the bowstring and hid the arrow, after which he rushed towards his fellow knight. The wounded mage also rushed after him. His strength was running out. The battle had gone on too long, and his stamina was no longer enough to continue. The ancient ruler was only glad that his opponents were so crowded together, because it would be easier for him to attack them all at once. Although the warrior called his comrades to protect him, he felt that his wounds were already exhausting him, and his strength was leaving him. The next moment, when he thought that they were about to be finished off, instead of the next blows, he began to feel very light. His strength returned to him, and a healing effect was applied to him. Oasis saved them by blocking the attack with his sacred shield skill, saving the entire squad from being killed in a sandstorm. The guys praised Oasis and thanked him for his timely help. He could not hold the defense for a long time, but the knight said that this was not required because he would then take over the defense himself. Focusing his attention, he used the protective shield skill. The further battle was already a foregone conclusion. Oasis withdrew his skill, the knight's shield took over the damage, and the entire squad still remained protected from the boss's massive attack. When the storm ended, the warrior dissipated the shield. The whole room around them was filled with sand, and the boss was very scared when he saw his enemies alive and well. The magician was tired of hiding from the attacks of the undead, so he decided that now it was their turn to attack. The archer fully supported him, so they both began to focus the energy in their weapons to crush the boss with one powerful attack. A powerful joint attack fell on the skeleton, not giving him a chance to escape. Arrows and icicles pierced him right through. This attack was fatal. The monster let out its last cry, after which it began to crumble before the eyes of the squad. The king of the desert was defeated. The joyful guys ran towards each other, celebrating their victory. Out of joy, they all hugged together and joyfully exclaimed about their long-awaited victory. Oasis was not with them. He only watched how his temporary companions sincerely rejoiced at their victory. Having thoroughly rejoiced, they turned to the priest and with gestures thanked him with all their hearts for his help in this battle. This victory, the joyful faces, was precisely what reminded Oasis why games are fun. The triumph of the moment was interrupted by a message that Oasis received in his personal mailbox. It was his master, who was urging the boy to quickly come to him, so it was on this note that he had to say goodbye to the detachment and return to the city. After some time, the boy finally got to Anchovy. He was very dissatisfied with the fact that he was moving towards him for so long, so he asked him where he was. The priest honestly answered that all this time he had been exploring the dungeon with a group of other players, which is why he had to linger. The AI was worried that they would start scolding him, but instead of angry lectures, the guy only patted him on the head and praised him. The boy was very surprised by his master's reaction. He expected a worse turn of events. The warrior continued to question the priest, asking whether he had become friends with that squad, to which he received an affirmative answer, and Oasis also reported that they exchanged game contacts. What he heard greatly pleased the Dark Knight. He said out loud that his plan was going as it should. Curiosity overpowered the boy, so he directly asked why this fact made the owner so happy. The guy began his explanation from afar, saying that increasing his class was expensive and required 25,000 points of shame from him. Such a sum greatly amazed the priest. For further promotion, many times more points were required, 50,000 for the third promotion and 100,000 for the fourth. Such amounts caused uncontrollable outbursts of anger in the warrior. But he still had a decision. He was going to play dirty tricks, namely kill other players, because this would give him the most points of shame. Hearing this, the priest quickly realized what exactly his master was up to. He really wanted it to be untrue. 
but unfortunately for him, the next thing his master asked was to introduce him to new friends. Some time later, in the field of the enchanted forest, Oasis thanked the already familiar group for responding so quickly to his call. It was clear from the faces of the guys that they themselves were glad to help their new comrade because they were extremely grateful to him. Oasis explained that he needed accompaniment while traveling to the eastern city because he was afraid to go alone. The guys were happy with what they heard because they themselves needed to get to this city, so for all of them it was a good deal. The priest was nervously glad that they responded so easily. He understood that something very unpleasant would happen in the near future. In their thoughts, the guys were happy that they finally had their own healer in their squad, but they had no idea that they were walking straight into a trap. Deciding not to waste any more time, the detachment decided to set off. The guys joked that they were ready to accompany the priest even to the edge of the eastern continent. That was how valuable he was to them. After some time, the guys gradually continued to move east, simultaneously telling Oasis about how they ended up in the underground city. In other games, they were often in too much of a hurry, but in this game, they decided to take their time with their progress, but still got into fights with players being killed, so they earned a lot of shame points and ended up in the underground city. Having told this to them, they themselves became interested in the reason why Oasis was in the underground city besides them, which they asked directly. The priest was very surprised by the question and was taken aback. The guy who asked him clarified that the boy did not look like someone who could kill other players at all. He quickly found an answer for them, honestly saying that the points accumulated because of his comrade, as a result of which he ended up in the underground city with him. The knight in armor entered into a dialogue, noticing the fact that they too constantly forget about the rules within the game, and his comrade told Oasis that their magician had been the quiet one in their squad until recently. Turning to the squad, the knight was frightened and surprised that one person was missing among them. The magician from their squad disappeared somewhere, although he walked behind all the time, and they did not hear any sounds. The archer suggested that perhaps someone just called him on the phone and he fell behind them, because this often happened during their raids. He grumbled about the fact that their comrade was constantly going somewhere without informing anyone from the squad, but the knight decided that he would go look for him, so he asked the priest to wait a little. The priest realized that what was happening was the work of his master, so he answered uncertainly that he would wait here. After searching for a couple of minutes, they were still unable to find their comrade, so the guy in armor asked the archer to try calling him. He tried to do this, but the system reported that their friend was currently unavailable for a call. They suggested that perhaps he had left the game, but countering this guess was the fact that their comrade was still online. Another guess was the idea that a monster could have attacked him, but this theory was also unlikely because there were no monsters in the vicinity. The archer decided to play a trick on his comrade, so he assumed that their comrade was attacked by a ghost. He tried to caricature the attack of a ghost. The warrior in plate armor was very frightened. However, the reason for his fear was not the archer's poor acting skills, but what was hiding behind his back. The archer continued to play around and supposedly pretend to be a ghost. At the same time, something appeared behind him that emitted a purple glow. The guy thought that his comrade also wanted to play a trick on him, but the warrior in armor only tried to warn him about the giant shadow hand that was already ready to close and catch the archer. A giant, terrible hand grabbed the guy and abruptly dragged the archer away from the squad, leaving no chance to save him. The armored warrior watched helplessly as his comrade was carried away into the depths of the forest by this something, because he was powerless to stop this dark hand. Realizing that things were very bad, he shouted to the priest not to go far from him, however, when he tried to find the boy behind him, he realized that he was completely alone. Returning ten minutes ago, you can find out that all this time Anchovy was on the heels of the detachment, trying not to get noticed. Waiting for the perfect moment, he decided to try out his newly acquired skills as a Dark Knight. He used the Dark Hand skill, due to which his real hand was instantly covered with a black haze, from which a purple glow emanated. With his newly acquired hand, he could use three more additional skills, namely a grab, a claw, or a shield. The next moment he took advantage of the grab, a dark haze swelled and rushed towards the squad he was pursuing. The magician, who was the last one, heard rustling noises behind him, then decided to turn around and see what was happening there. Before he could react, a shadow hand grabbed him and pulled him away from the squad. He didn't even have time to scream before he was too far away from his comrades. Anchovy held the magician above him, who in turn did not understand what was happening and only helplessly asked about who grabbed him and why. Without concealment, the Dark Knight told his victim that right now he was going to kill the magician. 
The next moment, the knight rushed at his victim and instantly killed the magician with one blow. The first victim was killed, two more remained, and he grabbed the archer next. As soon as the archer flew to him, he dealt him a series of blows, leaving him no chance of survival. The archer's body fell lifelessly to the ground, and the dark knight himself was already aimed at the last of their squad. The knight in armor stood helplessly in the middle of the road, not knowing what to do, where to expect the attack from, and where the priest had fled. Anchovy watched this warrior. From his appearance, one could understand that one blow would clearly not be enough. Therefore, a different tactic was required. The Dark Knight's health was only half filled, but this should have been enough to defeat the last warrior. Anchovy did not shoot from cover. Instead, he slowly walked towards the warrior who noticed him quickly enough. He moved slowly, trying to intimidate his opponent, who still had not given up hope of finding a healer to help him in battle. Realizing that he would have to fight alone, he nevertheless turned all his attention to the killer who attacked them. He blamed the Dark Knight for the disappearance of his comrades. These accusations brought a smile to the killer's face. He didn't say a word. Instead, he took off, preparing to attack the last survivor. Realizing that a fight could not be avoided, the knight took a defensive stance, preparing to take the killer's blows. Anchovy didn't flinch. His defense skills were useless against his attacks, so the warrior only slowed himself down and made his situation worse. The Dark Knight began to rush around the warrior, periodically inflicting cutting blows on him which overtook their target without any problems. The warrior was shocked that his defenses were so easily ignored, so he needed to change his tactics. Lowering his defenses, he redirected the energy into his shield to unleash a solid running attack. Anchovy easily dodged this attack, which only sent it flying in front of him, missing its target. Instead of striking, the warrior only set himself up, so the Dark Knight was able to strike him at one of his weak points. As it turned out, this was what the warrior needed, he needed to close the distance in order to ultimately strike his opponent with his shield. A powerful blow from a bulky shield overtook his enemy. The attack was too fast, so it was impossible to dodge at such a distance. The warrior wanted to rejoice, but unfortunately the blow had no effect on his opponent. The Dark Knight, using the Shadow Hand skill, was able to create his own shield, which absorbed the warrior's attack, absorbing all possible damage. The warrior was extremely surprised. He did not expect that his opponent would block the blow, but Anchovy only laughed arrogantly. He complained and shouted that his opponent was cheating, but the Dark Knight did not listen and was already preparing to attack. The warrior noticed that he was about to be attacked again, so he covered his shield to block the attack. But the knight had already rushed past him, attacking his opponent with a claw. The guy's eyes grew dark. He couldn't see anything. Only impenetrable darkness surrounded him. Anchovy's skills greatly helped him against a stronger opponent. His next attack should deal one and a half times more damage, which should have put an end to this unequal battle. While the warrior was still blind, the knight ran behind him to perform the final blow. The blow found its target, causing incredible damage to the warrior as Anchovy's attack still ignored his opponent's defenses. The warrior fell heavily to the ground, his strength left him, the battle was over in favor of the Dark Knight. The guy smiled, the last of the squad fell at his hands, the new skills helped a lot in the battle, making it very simple. The warrior lying on the ground was conscious and insulted Anchovy, yet death in the game was conditional and in fact no one in the squad died. The guy, in response to the grumbling and insults, only said that this is how battles against players are and there is nothing to be offended about, after which he called Oasis over to him. The boy appeared. The warrior lying on the ground shouted at him to run away, but Oasis nervously continued to approach them. The warrior continued to scream, which infuriated the Dark Knight which is why he kicked the one lying down and demanded that he shut up. Oasis never ran away. He was preparing to use his skill. The warrior did not understand why he did not run away. The priest raised his staff, focused his energy into the staff, and then used resurrection around him. What he saw shocked the guy. He shouted that the priest should not use resurrection right now, but the skill was already activated. The skill covered the immediate space around the priest, after which the entire squad regained their strength and returned to their feet. Unfortunately, the negative effect of resurrection was that only a small part of the health was restored, and it also applied a negative effect, due to which they moved much slower. Anchovy knew about this, and this was exactly what he needed to implement the next stage of his plan. They could kill guys from the squad and then resurrect them, constantly receiving their shame points. The Dark Knight was approaching them, dark energy was oozing from his sword, and the guy himself looked like a maniac who had driven his victim. The guys in the detachment understood that they would not have the most pleasant experience in the near future, but they could not do anything about it. After a series of murders and resurrections, 
the squad was completely exhausted and Anchovy was counting the shame points he had earned. He was constantly confused, so he asked the priest to count what he had earned, to which he reluctantly replied that the knight had earned more than 7,000 points. The guy was very pleased with the result. In such a simple way, he can earn a lot of points in the shortest possible time. He thanked the exhausted squad for helping him carry out the plan. The warrior was able to raise his head and asked why the knight was doing something like that and what exactly his goals were. Anchovy calmly began to explain that there was no personal hostility in this situation and they were simply unlucky to become sources of points of shame. He then placed his hand on Oasis's head and told the squad that he was able to teach them a good lesson through his actions. He leaned closer to the boy and told the squad not to stare at other people's healers anymore. Tears appeared on the boy's face. He quietly apologized to the guys because he had no ill will towards them and did not want a similar fate. The entire squad did not hear these words. They were simply surprised that such a nice guy was hanging out with a rare psycho. Realizing that they had nothing more to do here, Anchovy said goodbye to the injured squad before leaving, scaring them with the fact that they would meet again. The guys did not say a single word after them, but only watched the retreating pair of villains. When they disappeared from sight, a knight from the squad suggested that his comrades leave the underground city because they would not be able to advance anywhere if they remained there. The archer and the magician were also conscious, so when they heard the proposal they immediately agreed. The main duo did not hear them and only continued to walk towards the city, preparing to commit new evil. Already in the city, Anchovy checked his characteristics. Game statistics showed that he was a third-level demon king, and his characteristics increased slightly, and even a small magical defense appeared. He wanted to turn to Oasis, but before he fully addressed him, he saw that the boy was sitting on the ground and crying. He was close to starting to cry, because he was worried about letting his newfound comrades down. The Dark Knight stubbornly did not understand this. Recent memories swirled in the boy's head. He recalled their raid on the castle of the King of the Desert. After defeating the boss, the guys came across a very rare staff, which could very rarely be found among the boss's loot. The guys were glad to have such a loot, because their magician could get an excellent staff to replace his own. But he turned to the priest. He approached the boy and handed him the staff, simultaneously informing him that he did not need it. The healer was shocked by such a gift. The guys were also very surprised by the act of their magician. Nevertheless, this battle was difficult for them, and the staff was a very rare catch. They asked the magician whether he was serious in his intentions, to which he only replied that without the healer, nothing would have worked out. The magician handed the staff to the priest, after which he put it in his hand, saying that in return, he would have only one request. He smiled wholeheartedly and asked that Oasis also help them in their adventures from time to time. The priest was even more surprised at such a simple request, but replied that he would definitely help them. The guy and his squad were very pleased with the healer's answer, so they said that they hoped to work with him in the future. The memory was interrupted by Anchovy, grumbling that he didn't understand the AI's gloomy mood. Realizing that the matter was most likely in the detachment they were mocking, he tried to explain that in the underground city you cannot trust people, because everyone here pursued their own selfish goals. After these words, Oasis nevertheless lost his temper. He began to shout that these guys trusted him, that they asked to finish them off and not continue to resurrect them, and he did the opposite, betraying them. The guy tried to calm the priest down. He began to explain that as long as they worked together, they would encounter even more difficult tasks than the last one. The boy was hooked by these words. He was scared, because what happened before had already pulled out something that could be called the soul. The guy continued to explain to him that their goal was even grander and they must destroy the world of this game. But Oasis directly said that this would be a very vile and vile act. The boy tried to explain to his master that these guys really valued him. That's why they even gave him a unique staff. Anchovy snatched the staff from the priest's hands, saying that most likely it was some kind of low-level trinket that had no value to them. The guy used the game windows with statistics, and when he saw the statistics of the item, he was very surprised because he had a really powerful artifact in his hands. He also noticed that this staff was once a priceless treasure, and since those guys decided to give it away, then they really valued the boy. After what was said, the priest began to get really hysterical, because since those guys gave him something so valuable, then they were definitely good people. The knight tried to smooth over what he had said, adding that at the moment the staff had no particular value and there was no demand for it. However, in fact, he knew that even now this staff was useful up to level 70, but in order not to upset his henchmen, he wanted to lie. Realizing that the dialogue wouldn't really work out right now, 
he decided that the boy should be allowed to be alone. He told the priest that he was tired and would go take a nap, but before leaving he checked with him whether the AI had reached level 50th. The priest answered in the affirmative, but Anchovy said that now he needed to receive a task for a secondary class change and also run through the dungeons several more times. He also said that the priest needed to find more teams because he was sure that the boy would not calm down until he helped everyone he met. And after hearing this, Oasis asked whether all the troops he met would face a similar fate. The knight confirmed the boy's fears, saying that everyone would face the same fate as today's squad. He added that two or three more such repetitions and he would be able to change classes again, after which they would again be able to increase their levels. The boy was not delighted with what he heard. Having finished, the guy once again reminded his assistant to find more units, after which he left the game, dissolving into a multitude of pixels right in the air. The priest was in a bad mood. It seemed to him that his master had completely decided to abandon humanity. But deciding to calm himself down, he found a fishing rod in his inventory and went fishing. He sat by the pond and fished, thinking that he had nothing to worry about. After all, it was just a game and he shouldn't take everything here seriously. Moreover, he was here not just to play, but precisely to help his master achieve his goals. The boy did not have time to properly think through these thoughts because someone approached him. A group of three people appeared before him. The first thing they asked him was if the boy was a healer. One of them explained to him that they wanted to go into the dungeon for a secondary class change, but their squad was missing a healer. He asked the healer to help, but he got scared and pulled a very strange face. Without answering anything, he quickly turned away from them, silently continuing to fish. The guys from the detachment were extremely surprised by such a reaction. The tension in the dialogue was growing, so the guy decided to tone it down a little, saying that if the priest was very busy at the moment, then they could wait for him. Oasis continued to remain silent. A storm of doubts raged in his head. He wanted to have fun again, but his recent experience made him despondent. The guys thought that there was no point in trying to persuade the boy, so they apologized for disturbing him. But Oasis spoke to him, asking only if they would mind inviting the boy to the team. The guys heard the doctor speak, but didn't hear him, so they asked him to repeat it. Oasis repeated his question, but louder, he wanted to know if the guys really would mind if he joined them. They replied that they would be glad to see him in their squad, and even asked him to join them. The boy still didn't look at the squad, but said that he agreed to join them, because he also needed to change class. The guys were glad to hear what they heard, but Oasis Oasis had one more question for the whole trio. Having caught the fish, he turned around and, smiling lightly, asked them how many points of shame they all had at the moment. At the same time, Grace was talking with Sam. She tried to explain to him that if they introduce a new payment system into the game now, then many players will leave the game due to the fact that there will be a huge difference between ordinary users and those who make purchases. The director was not interested in this. All he was interested in was higher income from the game in the shortest possible time, so he asked the AI for forecasts on how much their income would increase in the near future. Grace could not answer this question. There were too many variables to calculate to get any exact answer. The director swore he didn't like that the best artificial intelligence could not calculate what he asked her to do. He approached her and asked himself what would happen if he hit the AI. Would it spoil his mood? Would he be upset? The AI took this as a direct question, so it answered the man that it would not react in any way to his actions, and on the contrary, the girl offered to beat herself as much as necessary. Sam chuckled and told her that he was only joking, after which he began to disconnect from the simulation. He disconnected from the simulation and began to take off his headset. At the same time, he contacted his manager by phone. The manager asked what the director needed. Taking off his headset, he asked the manager to call all department heads for a meeting. After some time, all the managers were already gathering in the room for general meetings. Among the leaders were also Anchovy's friends, Sarah and John, a plump guy having caught up with his girlfriend, asked what they were having a meeting about, to which the girl replied that she herself knew nothing. The girl grumbled about the unpredictability of the new CEO because this was not the first spontaneous meeting that he organized. Already at the meeting, Sam announced that starting next week they would change the tariffs and introduce a new payment system in the game. What they heard greatly shocked everyone present because it was too soon for such serious changes. John noted that such drastic changes could anger players, which would definitely cause problems for the company. The director listened to what he heard. He began to scratch his chin, plunged into deep thought. After only a couple of seconds, he addressed the overweight guy specifically, asking him about how Anchovy treated the players. John did not quite understand the question, which is why the director noticed that, 
Apparently, the previous owner of the company had a strong influence on all the heads of departments. The fat guy still understood what he was asked about. He said that the previous owner called the users hunters, who were going on a journey to the world they created, and they themselves were their support, which helped in this adventure. The director heard what was said and again plunged into deep thoughts, processing what he had heard. After another couple of seconds, he laughed out loud, which made everyone present feel awkward. Thanks to what was said, he understood why their company had absolutely no profit, which he announced out loud to those present, after which he said that all users from now on would be called simply cattle. The faces of some of the developers changed from awkward expressions to more embittered ones. Sarah thought that she had heard what was said, so she asked Sam to repeat what he said. The director repeated his pleasure and even explained in great color that their users are nothing more than livestock, or more precisely, pigs, who will rejoice at any food thrown at them. He asked those present if he had gone too far with his expressions, but most of the developers sat as if they had taken water into their mouths, and only fear or misunderstanding was visible on their faces. Seeing these faces, Sam continued to speak and said that he was definitely right, and soon everyone present would understand his position. He knew that users would be unhappy with the new paid systems and products, so they needed to throw some food into the mix. The director abruptly turned to the head of the planning department. As soon as the man noticed that they had addressed him, he answered the address in fear. Sam demanded that they replenish the balance of users who already had a valid subscription according to its validity period, and also demanded that half of the paid goods could be purchased by current users with in-game currency. Also, another requirement was to give users improvements for faster development. All this was supposed to appease them. Sarah wanted to stop such hasty decisions, but before she could say anything, their director continued his speech. He turned to everyone present with the question why their game did not bring any significant income. This was a really good question, because in the polls their game was ranked number one in every ranking except revenue generated. He said the reason for this was that everyone present was untalented. But he called Anchovy the main loser, because it was he who allowed the current state of their game and considered the players to be some kind of hunters. It was all a game, just virtual entertainment, something like an amusement park in his opinion. In such places you had to pay not only for the entrance. Everything inside the game was similar to drinks, food, attractions and other entertainment, which means that you also had to pay for it. Everything had to be sold. The atmosphere in the office was more and more awkward. Everyone understood that such arguments could destroy the game, but no one could utter a word out of fear. To diffuse the situation a little, Sam apologized for the large number of unusual proposals, after which he cleverly jumped into the topic of the fact that everyone present had not received bonuses for a long time. He promised that if everything was done as the director said, then the incomes of everyone present would increase and bonuses would be more frequent. Sarah was sarcastically surprised at this statement. After that, Sam asked everyone to make every effort to make everything that was said happen, and also said that he was expecting suggestions for new products in the game. He headed towards the exit, simultaneously saying that the launch would be next Monday, in five days. On this day, they would immediately transfer the game from a subscription distribution system to a free one. The director also noted that in three weeks they will start the sixth season, and at the same time they will begin selling character enhancement coupons. Everyone turned to look at him. Sam noticed that this object did not yet have a name. Standing in the aisle, he thought that since the game was called Wing, then a good name for the item could be Goddess Wings. The head of the planning department immediately told him that the title was great, his face still showing the fear of being fired. This answer satisfied the director, so he left the meeting room and finally told everyone to get back to their work. After he left, there was deathly silence in the office, and the employees looked at each other. The silence was broken by one of the employees with a question about what their bonus was at the launch, after which everyone began to discuss the entire meeting. And only John and Sarah sat in silence, because they understood what this whole idea would lead to. The next day, Anchovy returned to the game. He slept for more than ten hours, so he was absent for almost half the day. At the place where they parted, Oasis sat quietly and fished. He noticed that his owner had returned to the game. He was excited about Anchovy's return and rushed about on the spot, but the knight did not share the enthusiasm and only asked if his henchman was all right. The priest said that something had happened in the absence of the owner, so he asked if Anchovy had heard about this news. The boy said that starting next week the game would become free and paid items would appear, and Sam was the new director. What he heard did not greatly surprise the knight, although these decisions were made faster than he expected. 
Oasis thought that this news would greatly upset his owner because he had always been against the introduction of paid items into the game. Having finished viewing the messages, Anchovy closed the interface with the news and only said that this was good news, which surprised the priest. The guy explained that after level 70, it would become difficult to develop his character, and new paid items greatly simplified this process. The boy was still surprised by such reasoning. He looked at him with delight, because instead of being upset, his owner decided to use the innovations for his own benefit. No matter what happened or changed, Anchovy used everything to achieve his own goals. This inspired the AI in its own way. The knight interrupted the priest's thoughts by asking him if he was done with his secondary class change. The priest said that he had received a new class and also established communication with three other groups and received the 55th level, for which the guy praised Oasis and patted him on the head. After that, he took the sword out of its sheath and cheerfully said that it was time for them to harvest the points of shame from the boy's new friends. After some time, screams were heard in the same forest and a battle was going on. Oasis was sitting behind a tree. He looked confused and alarmed. The sounds of battle did not subside for a moment. The boy had yarn and knitting needles in his hands. He sat and knitted something. The noises of battle and cries from wounds did not subside to the side. Instead of worrying about the ongoing battle, the boy was only worried because while he was knitting, he missed one loop. The battle died down. The Dark Knight called out to the boy. He called the priest and said that now it was his turn. Hearing this, he put the unfinished hat into his inventory and headed to his owner. The squad lay on the ground, unable to rise. They shouted for Oasis to run away as quickly as possible. But the poor fellows did not know that the boy was not in any danger. The only thing that worried the boy at the moment was that he should have practiced knitting more. And after this thought, he used resurrection on the fallen squad. After painful hours of bullying for the squads, the knight's goal was finally achieved. Now he could also send him to a class change. Oasis was genuinely happy about this. A dark portal opened in front of Anchovy. The boy wished his master good luck, but the knight called him with him because this time he needed his help. Together, they calmly entered the portal, leaving the exhausted squad behind them. On the other side of the portal, the dark knight was greeted with open arms and applause by Terry. He was incredibly happy to see the rising dark deity. He informed the arrivals that Anchovy now had enough points to get the next class. However, everything was not so simple, because in order to receive a higher rank, the new deity needed to pass a test. The knight also noted that it would not be easy, after which he asked if the applicant was ready for the test. In response to this, the guy only replied that the more difficult the test, the more valuable it is. What he heard caused even greater delight on Terry's part. He replied that these were precisely the words of the new star of the dark religion. Not daring to delay Anchovy any longer, he clapped his hands, after which the floor beneath them began to tremble slightly. The pentagram in the center of the room began to move apart. As it turned out, it was a secret passage that was opened only by order of the dark curator. Having opened up, a dark descent appeared before them. From below, there was a whiff of cold and something ominous. The night curator smiled again and announced that Anchovy's test was beginning. Only Anchovy and Oasis went down. Below them, a large and luxurious hall appeared before them. It did not look abandoned, but there was a slight cold and hum inside. The priest noticed that this place looked more like an ordinary room than a full-fledged dungeon. The next moment they noticed that in the center of the room someone was standing and looking at them. The boy got scared and hid behind his owner. He recognized someone in this person. Before them appeared one of the three great warriors who a hundred years ago brought peace to the mainland, defeating the dark religion and everyone associated with it. His title was the King of the Sword, and his name was Cadmos Gargantua, and it was he who now looked at them without any emotion. Anchovy was a little surprised. He clarified whether it was really such a great character in front of them, after which he himself corrected that it was just his shadow. The Dark Knight explained that after its fall, the dark religion that was able to survive created the shadows of three heroes, that it was defeated, and the Dark Knights learned the battle tactics of these warriors by training with these shadows. At least that's what was written in history. Anchovy himself knew a different truth about the appearance of shadows. The real reason for the presence of these shadows was more prosaic. The head of the design department simply refused to create other characters, so models of existing ones were used. The shadow warrior gradually approached the guys. The emotions on his face changed. He looked more embittered. The Dark Knight told the priest to be ready for a serious fight because this character was set to level 50 and his artificial intelligence was more advanced, unlike simple non-player characters. The Shadow Warrior quickened his pace and got closer and closer to the guys, getting ready to attack them. 
Realizing that a battle could not be avoided, he explained to his subordinate that an incredibly difficult battle awaited them, probably the most difficult that they had encountered on their way. The warrior swung at the knight. His attack was very fast. It was very difficult to keep up with such speed. The blow almost caught the dark knight. The warrior was able to touch his shirt, but did not hit the knight himself. Before he could come to his senses, the guy noticed that the shadow was already preparing a new attack. But this time, the warrior was already about to pierce his opponent. With difficulty, Anchovy managed to avoid being hit by several piercing attacks. The shadow was incredibly fast and strong. It was also not possible to escape from the enemy because the warrior was quickly catching up with him. So the only solution now was to somehow hold on and play for time. The Anchovy's health was rapidly declining, but he did not despair because he was a warrior who fought using only his strength, so he would definitely cope with some swordsmen. Suddenly, the shadow retreated and calmed down. Anchovy realized that now it was his turn to attack. He shouted to Oasis to use the healing as soon as possible, but the boy had already foreseen the owner's desire and cured him. The priest said that he would maintain the knight's health at the proper level, and also said that he would help him with skills. Oasis began to cast spells one after another, adding strength to its owner, increasing his attack, agility, and health parameters. The warrior liked this. With such enhancements and healing, the battle was already decided. He used the Darkness Aura skill and rushed at his opponent, preparing to crush him with a variety of powerful attacks. He ran up to the warrior and began to cut him with a successive dark blow, but all the attacks did not reach their target. Anchovy didn't understand why all the attacks missed, but the answer came to his mind very quickly. The difference in their performance was too obvious. The knight needed strong equipment because a high level alone was not enough. The shadow realized that the blows did not reach him and could not cause harm, so he smiled, gloating over the knight. Anchovy noticed this. It infuriated him greatly, so he directly addressed the warrior, asking him how he dared to laugh. It infuriated him that the creation he created mocked his own creator, so he promised that he would properly teach the shadow a lesson. Having said this, he quickly turned around, said that he would do it later and ran away, leaving the shadow in bewilderment. He rushed past the oasis, shouting that he needed to buy some equipment, so now the priest would replace him. The priest was shocked by what he heard. His face showed both surprise and fear of what awaited him in the next few minutes. The shadow was already approaching the priest. The boy noticed a dark figure. He was even more frightened. The priest did not understand how everything had come to such a strange and stupid situation again. The attacks poured on the priest in one powerful stream. Thanks to the fact that he was also an AI, he managed to repel them all. The shadow continued to stab and cut. Oasis parried and repulsed these attacks with incredible speed, but this could not continue forever. He repelled all attacks, but this did not mean that he avoided damage, because parrying and reflecting the warrior's attacks only partially blocked the incoming damage, so the boy's health gradually decreased. The shadow was determined. The warrior did not care who was in front of him, a knight aspirant or a priest not adapted to close combat. His only goal was battle. The enemy retreated, which meant a short pause for the priest, during which he should restore his strength as quickly as possible. The boy restored his health with a spell, after which he turned in the direction where his owner had fled and shouted that he could really die here while Anchovy was missing somewhere. The knight leaned out of the passage through which they had come and asked the boy to be patient a little longer. This situation did not suit the priest. He already demanded that his master run here to help, and at this time the shadow was again preparing to cast itself on him. The warrior hit the ground with incredible force. The blow threw the priest aside but did not kill him. Another attack caught Oasis, but he was able to shield himself from it with his staff, avoiding major damage. The shadow continued to launch an inexorable series of attacks. The priest managed to fight back, but his health still continued to decline. The boy was at the limit. He could no longer continue to endure these attacks. The shadow understood this, so he decided to end everything with a crushing blow from above. There was no way to evade the attack, Oasis was not agile enough for this, but it was at that moment that he remembered something. A crushing blow hit the ground, crushing the floor of the room into stone crumbs. Such an attack was very difficult to survive. However, although it seemed to Oasis that everything was lost, he was still standing alive. He remembered the beginner's knife, with which he managed to parry this terribly strong attack, blocking all the damage. The shadow was stunned by such a brazen but incredibly simple technique. His powerful attack was blocked by some pathetic dagger of a beginner. The next moment, the dagger cracked and split, leaving only the handle in the priest's hands. Oasis was very unpleasantly surprised, 
He hoped that he would be able to use it longer in this battle, but now he only sadly looked at the shadow approaching him. Shadow was funny at what had happened. He started running. This time, nothing could save his attacks. Oasis froze in fear. He didn't know what else he could do, so he just watched as his next death approached him. The warrior accelerated even more, after which he made a swing. The force of this swing was destructive, and it seemed that the place he hit literally exploded. Oasis was very frightened and closed his eyes, but the blow did not hit him, because he was still alive. He carefully opened his eyes to understand what had happened. His owner appeared before him, but now he was clad in heavy armor, which was able to absorb this incredibly powerful blow. Anchovy thanked the priest for being able to stall for so long, after which he turned to the shadow as a false warrior. He invited the shadow to hit him, thereby trying to provoke his opponent. It worked. The shadow warrior rushed at the knight with the only desire to destroy his offender. The dark knight did not stand still. He was preparing an attack, simultaneously saying under his breath that now the shadow would be in great pain. Anchovy lunged and attacked the shadow with a dark successive strike. The blow was so powerful that the shadow was simply chopped into various pieces. Such an attack left no chance of survival. What he saw caused the delight of the priest. The enemy, who had just been impossible to hit, was now defeated with just one move. Oasis shouted out his applause, calling Anchovy simply amazing. Such flattery pleased the knight. The warrior was defeated, which meant that they would now have to fight the next enemy that had already appeared in front of them. The priest noticed a new opponent, so he hastened to draw the owner's attention to the new opponent. He explained that now the shadow of Kyrie Allison appeared before them, who was the legendary archmage, the second of the three great warriors, which meant that their goal at the moment was to destroy the shadows of all three legendary warriors. The magician's shadow did not waste time. She immediately began to cast a spell that summoned a giant fireball right above her head. This attack will most likely destroy the Dark Knight, because even if he reflects the first ball with a shadow shield, many more will immediately follow, leaving him no chance. The knight turned to the boy, put his hands on his shoulders and said that he had a secret weapon for such a case. Oasis became curious. The boy noticed that his master always has some way out, to which Anchovy only apologized to the boy. The priest did not understand what the knight meant, but the next moment he lost solid ground under his feet. The guy raised his subordinate and shouted that he was using the shield of a secret friend. Oasis still did not understand what was happening. Before the boy had time to realize what was happening, a fireball flew into him and burned his back. From such a surprise, he screamed angrily. The shadow considered that the battle was already over and the challenger was burned in its flame. Unfortunately for her, the knight calmly emerged from the flames without a single injury. The magician was extremely dumbfounded by this. Before she could do anything, Anchovy rushed at her, preparing for a series of powerful attacks. He overtook his target and in one move chopped it into separate parts. Just like his first opponent, this battle was over. As soon as it was all over, the knight approached his comrade. He thanked him for this incredible sacrifice, but the boy asked to simply resurrect him as quickly as possible without formalities. Realizing that this could have hurt the boy, he resurrected him and asked if he was offended. But Oasis said that he was already used to it, and all he needed was just a little time to regain his strength. Anchovy did not answer Oasis. His last opponent appeared before him. The priest asked if everything was all right. The knight was not at all happy to see this opponent. He did not answer Oasis, only muttered through his teeth that the most difficult part of the test was beginning. The last shadow appeared before them. It was Archbishop Eden's Kronotzid. The shadow was slowly approaching them. The AI asked the owner what class their enemy was. The knight only meekly replied that he was a priest. Oasis was delighted with what he heard, since in front of them was a priest, like himself. He had very little combat skills, which means the battle promises to be quick. Anchovy hastened to upset the boy, saying that in front of them was a battle priest, and among the whole three he was the strongest. The boy was surprised and asked how strong the battle priests were, but the knight explained that their attacking skills were not too high. The next moment, the archbishop threw off his robe, revealing the heavy armor on his body. The guy continued to explain about the archbishop's class, adding that they were very nasty. The boy did not understand what his master said. The knight did not explain to his subordinate what he meant. Instead, he rushed at the enemy and demanded that Oasis apply enhancements to him. The priest obeyed and began to apply enhancements to Anchovy, although he did not understand what kind of fight awaited them. The knight used the dark hand claw skill on the archbishop. The attack overtook its target because this shadow was very slow. The enemy stood stunned, but Anchovy was already preparing to attack him from behind. A series of his blows also caught up with their target. The shadow could not move anywhere due to the stun, 
and blindness aggravated this negative effect. The blow was very powerful, but it was only able to take away a quarter of the Archbishop's health, which Anchovy did not like much. Once the negative effects had dissipated, the shadow grabbed the handle of the hammer behind its back. The Archbishop raised a hammer directly from behind, which in the next instant struck the ceiling with lightning bolts. Lightning rolled across the room. One of the charges flew towards the knight, after which a hammer appeared above him. Lightning also flashed over the oasis and a hammer appeared. They did not bode well. The next moment, the hammers fell on their heads, stunning the guys and immobilizing them. Oasis was frightened because he could not move, so the knight immediately explained that this was due to the stun effect. While they stood immobilized, the archbishop used a healing hand on himself, restoring all of his health at the cost of a small amount of his mana. After this whole picture, Anchovy turned to his assistant and asked if he understood what was meant by the nasty enemy. The boy answered in the affirmative. Their opponent was indeed very unpleasant. The essence of this class was to invest everything in health, find the best equipment for protection, and also learn skills for healing and stunning the enemy. All this was exactly what was needed to create the most annoying enemy, who could not kill, but there was no way to defeat him either. The boy was very surprised. He asked how they could defeat an enemy who was constantly restoring his health. The knight explained that since their opponent was a non-player character, he could not restore his mana, which meant that they only had to wait until it ran out. Oasis did not feel much better about what he heard. He asked how long all this could take them. By this moment, the stun had ended, so the knight again rushed at the enemy, informing his comrade that they would learn from their own experience how much time they needed. Long hours later, the battle continued to rage, the archbishop once again stunning the duo to restore his health. The Dark Knight was incredibly infuriated by this, because for the fourth hour in a row, he had been hit on the head with a hammer, which made it all look like a crazy dream. Oasis rescued his master from the prison of madness, informing him that their enemy could no longer restore his health. And indeed, trying to use healing hands again, the health of the shadow did not change in any way. The guy was delighted with this news, but instead of attacking his defenseless opponent, he replaced his thorn sword with some kind of frail club. Oasis noticed this, and asked his owner where he put his weapon and why he armed himself with this garbage. The knight explained that if he hits with a sword, the shadow will die very quickly. But he wants to show his enemy how disgusting it is when there are a lot of you hit on the head several times in a row, thereby avenging long hours of personal suffering. Shadow was also surprised by the choice of weapon, but did not understand what awaited her in the next few minutes. Anchovy flew up to his opponent and yelling angrily, swung his club over the archbishop's head. He began to hit the enemy exclusively on the head. The boy watched this picture. He even felt a little sorry for the helpless shadow. The task was completed. Anchovy proudly walked away from the corpse of the archbishop, happy that he would finally raise his class. And Oasis begged the soul of the poor shadow until its next regeneration. The set of opponents in this test greatly amazed Oasis. Looking at the dead shadow, he was surprised at how strange they all were. He asked that since so many strange NPCs were used for testing, what were the real players like? Through the interface, Anchovy hid his interface and reported that the real players in the competition were even stranger and their playing styles were more like some kind of perversion. Recalling the competition, he said that each time more and more strange players appeared at them, it was very interesting to watch them and the world community even considered it a full-fledged esports. Seeing how warmly the owner talks about his memories, Oasis began to doubt whether he really wanted to destroy this game. They rushed towards the exit, but thoughts troubled the priest's head. He was not sure whether Anchovy would be happy when they reached their goal. Having risen, they were met again by Terry. He was very glad to see and said that he did not doubt for a moment that they would cope with everything. The Dark Curator explained that from this moment the guy becomes a Dark Commander, and it is he who now leads the army of the Dark Order. From that moment on, Anchovy's class was raised, and he was given access to the stronghold of the Dark Order, as well as the opportunity to develop it and the Army of Darkness. Now the guy was the leader of the Army of Darkness in the underground city, so now he can completely devote himself to serving their Dark God Crow. The knight remembered that with the receipt of a new class, the ban that the goddess had placed on him was lifted from him, and Oasis became interested in what kind of base of darkness there was in the underground city. The knight pleased the curiosity of his henchmen, but he did not tell anything. Instead, he promised that the boy would see everything for himself. Having finished talking about new opportunities and responsibilities, Terry blessed the new ruler with darkness and sent him to convey the news of the return of the Dark Order throughout the continent. In the underground city, 
A familiar dark silhouette stood in an alley and waited for something. They called him by name. It was none other than Dean, an old acquaintance of the guys, and he didn't like that someone called him by his real name. Anchovy waved to the bald messenger in a robe and said that they had not seen each other for a long time, but Oasis just smiled awkwardly. The man in the robe was very scared, but did not run away and greeted his new commander. Apparently, he still remembered what Anchovy did to him. The knight did not attach much importance to this and only asked his new minion where the base of the Dark Order was located. The fear on the contact's face gave way to a proud smile. He told the guys that they had come to the right place and he would take them. The man brought them closer to the outskirts of the city, and as soon as they arrived, the only thing that was in front of them was a rural, cobbled-together outhouse. Anchovy did not remember that the entrance was in such a place, and Dean, in turn, calmly walked towards a small building. Without the slightest doubt, he approached the booth, grabbed the handle and sharply opened the door. He did not pay attention to what was behind the door and only kindly invited the guys to enter with gestures. But inside, there was a bearded man who calmly relieved himself until he was so rudely interrupted, the priest felt very embarrassed by what he saw. The village man darted out of the toilet, shouting at those who disturbed him that even dogs are not touched when they relieve themselves. This picture made even Anchovy feel uncomfortable. The entrance to the base was in such a place due to the fact that Anchovy himself, during development, allowed the system to choose a location randomly. But even so, of all the places, for some reason the system chose this one. The guys awkwardly looked at the toilet, in which a new dark portal was about to appear. They had no desire to go inside at all. The portal actually appeared, but unfortunately for them, it formed exactly where they least wanted it. Dean, seeing that the portal had opened, joyfully called the guys to quickly go inside. Anchovy cursed properly because of everything that was happening, and Oasis began to complain that because of everything that was happening, he began to feel sick. Already somewhere else, the guys began to materialize in the air, overpowering the urge to vomit. They still passed through the portal. Having appeared, they immediately began to clear their throats, and Anchovy continued to swear in the same manner. Oasis, realizing that they had already left that disgusting place, opened his eyes and saw where they were going. He wanted to clarify whether this was what he was thinking about, but the knight beat him to it, informing him that they had arrived at the military base of the Dark Order. Before them appeared the gates and tower of what was once a stronghold of the Dark Order, but now everything here was destroyed, and in the near future they had to restore the former greatness of this place.